Look, it's the Duke's son. No, that's Satan's son. Hang him from the gibbet! Die, heretic. Kill him! Dwellers of Villa de Fontenegra, behold the power of the Inquisition. No son of Satan will ever escape the wrath of God. Not even he who hides in noble garments.
My name is Miguel de Castro, son of Don Alvaro de Castro, Duke of Fuentenegro. I order you in his name, set me free at once. Now, now, you're in no position to give orders, Don Miguel. You can only have one father, and your ability to understand every language indicates that your true father is the devil himself. Hence, the Duke has disowned you before the Inquisition. You're right. I am the spawn of Satan. So set me free, mortal, or I swear your descendants will be cursed forever. You swear in vain, Don Miguel. Your menaces don't move me. Unlike the Cretans in his superstitious village, I don't believe in the existence of God or the devil. Then the Inquisition will be very happy to hear about your absence of faith. You'll be pleased to know that this is exactly why the Inquisition hired me. So many prisoners down here threaten me with their satanic powers. A superstitious man would have fallen prey already. Oh, for God's sake, have mercy on me. Half a minute ago, you threatened me in the name of Satan. If my soul had any room for mercy, it wouldn't be for you. You drink all the time. Why aren't you drunk by now? He who has soldiered long enough becomes immune to alcohol. And crab lice, for that matter, Don Miguel. There are things a man does to forget what he did today. Face what you'll do tomorrow. Are you going to torture me? Yes, I am. They'll ask questions you have no answer for. Like all prisoners, you'll hang on to a vain hope of survival. It'll take you hours to confess. With a little bit of luck, I'll get to use all my instruments on you. How does the boot work? You turn the handle to separate the two boards as much as possible. Then you put the prisoner's ankle between them. There was oil inside the cauldron in my cell, wasn't there? The usual procedure is to boil the oil and then pour it over the prisoner. I prefer to combine it with metal funnels to fill his orifices. There's a wooden board with holes in my cell. What's it for? It amazes me that you've never seen the stalks before. The Duke, your former father, must have used it on his vassals very often. Right, the head goes in the big opening, your arms or legs in the small ones. Then it's taken to the public square for public school. What else can you tell me about the stocks? Well, the stocks is a free torture instrument invented by Sir Richard Stockman. He believes that torture is a common good, a space of possibilities that should be open to the community's creativity. This way, everyone can modify the prisoner's state by forking him or distributing his individuality over him, usually in the shape of fluids if you take my meaning. You said Vilar de Fuentenegro is a superstitious village. As soon as the word spread that you can understand every language, your neighbors denounced you to the Inquisition. Why is there a hog in my cell? Like you, it awaits its turn to be tortured and judged. If only it were wait in silence! What's my disgusting cell companion accused of? With sacrilege. The monk who took care of it cut himself with a farming tool. The pig smelled the blood, went wild, and ate him. That's murder, not sacrilege. 
I were it only a murder, it wouldn't be judged by the Inquisition, but by your former father. The monk had just received communion, you see. According to the church, he had Christ's body inside him. So the Og received communion by eating the monk. And as we all know, taking communion without being baptized is a sacrilege. One common of demons. It's total foolishness, but ours is a foolish world. You crazy? How can the Inquisition judge an animal? This isn't the first time. Months ago, a bunch of termites were judged. They had eaten an altarpiece. The French Inquisition, on its side, got an org to confess a crime after torturing it for days. That really is crazy. Oh, the Inquisition is a magnificent craze. In any case, once you get to know my methods, you will be sure I can coax a confession out of the most silent of stones. So then, you're going to torture a hog? I will admit, it's not as satisfying as torturing a human being. But we all must do things we don't really like. As soon as I finish with you, I'll start on it. But if the noise that the hog makes annoys you, how will you be able to torture it? It's true that the crying of a baby will disturb my dreams. But the cries of a baby being torn apart by my own hands would embellish them. That scar on your face? It's the longest one I've ever seen. A gift from battle from a soldier of that usurper Don Juan of Portugal. He was taken prisoner. I recognized him and tortured him savagely until death. Huh? I owe him my current vocation. Who was in my cell before me? A simpleton who satisfied his onanist impulses during Vigil Mass. Ooh. The idiot couldn't understand what he was accused of. He didn't have a clue what to confess. Shame, really.
Could you please fill my tankard? I'm dying of thirst. You lie. I know how a man dying of thirst looks. There was oil inside the cauldron in my cell, wasn't there? The usual procedure is to boil the oil and then pour it over the prisoner. I prefer to combine it with metal funnels to fill his orifices.
Danke. Don't be afraid, Don Miguel. As Satan's son, you'd better get used to all kinds of creatures, even my good Ursus. Now we must leave. No. I need you to answer some questions first. Only one. The rooster is about to crow. Why are you helping me? I seek for knowledge, Miguel. Your gift for languages is the key I need. You're satisfied? No, not yet. Who are you? My name is Gines de Orduña, and I belong to the Order of Minor Monks of St. Francis. Come here, I beg you. I haven't saved your life. I've granted you a new one, and I beg you, make good use of it. I... I'm sorry. I think I owe you an apology, don't I? Your only duty is to mount that horse right now, or all three of us will perish.
My name is John Yesterday. Yours too. Look at your left hand. If you have a scar like this one, then you've lost your memory. So let me bring you up to date. You are more than 500 years old. In 1501, the priest Hines de Orduña made you go through an alchemic transmutation, which makes you come back to life again each time you die. But when you resurrect, your body returns to the age and state that it was in when you first died, but you lose your memory. Thus, the email and this video. Three years ago, your girlfriend Pauline was transmuted too. When she dies, she comes back to life just like you, but with an advantage. She doesn't lose her memory. Look for her. Start here. In the meantime, if you want to know more about your past, visit this page. John? Yes. Are you awake? No. Again?
I heard you moving in your sleep. Nightmares? Yeah, sort of, I guess. Honestly, no. No, I'm sure they're not dreams. But my actual past lives... At least you're recovering your memory. Yeah, right. But the bad news is that it's always the same piece of memory. As if I were blocked at a specific point. Your friend the sacrilegious pig again, huh? Yep. Would you please stop dreaming about hogs while sleeping with me? <laughs> but I'm hog wild about you, dear. Something new about the coin? No. I think the events in my dream all happened before everything related to the coin and the transmutation. Is Boris coming to work today? Yeah, at noon. You told him to clean the van before he comes. Oops. Forgot. You think you're the only one who can have amnesia? Ha ha ha. That's not fair. Are you gonna take a shower? Nope. Took one last night before bed. Good. Because I need to use the shower again. Happy birthday, boss! Boris, today's not my birthday. Come down quick! 
I'm double parked. Come on! I gotta tell you something. You're never going to believe it. Okay, you convince me. Thanks, John. I'll take pictures of the sculpture and look for its documents. And me? John, you Google that collector just in case. Victoria Baxter, right? Yes, and me? Maybe we could give her a little gift to make a good impression. Well, as long as you take care of it. And me? You'll come to Baxter's house with me. If what you say is true and tomorrow, she's leaving on a trip, we must be quick. But now park that van. You're breaking the law. Yeah, no more tickets, Boris. Happy birthday. Tomorrow, you'll receive a parcel from me, a set of micro cameras with mics, incredibly small. There for you to set up a little security system in your shop. You have things I'm interested in, and I don't want to see you get robbed. But don't think that the cameras are for free. Hey, rat, I need you to find me a painting just like this one. Mediocre or bad quality. Anonymous painter, painted in the 1880s in the Netherlands. In its original frame. I'll come to Paris personally to pick it up in two days. Don't tell John or anybody else, okay, rat?
Boris! Hey, boss. John told you to park the van. Yes. Are you doing it? That's something I'm debating with him. You'll pay the fine next time, okay? Seems fair, boss. Did you take the van to the repair shop? You told me to go today, but the Baxter thing is more important, isn't it? Yes, but... I'll take that as a thanks, Boris. Happy birthday. Are you sure you got it right? You sure she's interested in the Neo sculpture? She said she had a soft spot for Japanese carvings. And as far as I know, ours is a marvel, isn't it? Ours? Yours. I can't find the nylon hammer. I have it. Why? None of your business. You want it? Give it to me. Sure, boss. Happy birthday. I want you to stop calling John Choke. Okay. But his name is Choke. 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 Choke, 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 choke. Stop it, Boris. Okay. End of argument. Choke. John, you already know what gift to give the collector? 
No, not yet. But I'll get an idea from the info I googled about her. I can't stand him calling you Choke. Why can't he get used to your real name? Because Choke was... I was... the first good thing that happened to him after he lost his son and he went mad. Give him some time. We've talked about this a lot of times. He's a bad worker, he costs us money, and we don't mean him anyway. I won't leave him again, Pauline. I promised him I'd take him out of the madhouse, and I did it. But now if I leave him in the street, what'll become of him? You should see how he treats me when you're not around. I don't know, maybe he's jealous. Jealous? He only has me. He says, happy birthday, more and more. He, he's getting worse. I wouldn't say that. I find him more centered. I mean, it's been months since he phoned the police to ask them about his son. Yeah, now he just looks for him on Facebook. Are you sure that Baxter is interested in the Neo? I know you're fond of the sculpture, but I think of it as a chess pawn. We lose it to save the shop. And of course she'll like it. According to Boris, she loves Japanese carved sculptures, and she won't find anything as good as our Nyo. I guess you're right, but there's less and less of my father here. You look strange today. Is it because of the nightmare? No. Yes. I, I don't know. It's like my memories are trying to tell me something. But what? If things go well, maybe we can take a real holiday. Very far away. Oh, I thought you wanted to visit Lemur and Weasel again. Weasel will come one of these days to get a painting she needs. And to hell with Lemmer. Hacker reformed, hacker buried. Oh, I'd love to see her again. And her kids. Well, we'll talk about it later.
When you die, you resurrect, but your body comes back to the shape it was in when you died for the very first time, and without any of your memories. So, although you had that scar erased with laser surgery, it's going to appear again if you die. Your best girl. Thanks to her, you've got a very worthwhile present. If the scar on your hand comes back, go to her and do whatever she tells you to do. You work at the antique shop that Pauline inherited from her father. Years ago, when you were known as Choke, you went crazy and lost your mind and ended up living in a derelict metro station in New York where the psycho found you. Down in the Cadway metro station, you made friends with another crazy street person. He was as nutty as you were. And what drove him crazy was that he couldn't accept the death of his son. Years later, you got him out of the loony bin they put him into and brought him to Paris, where he works with you and Pauline now. Three years ago, a totally crazy millionaire found you at Cadway, and he discovered that you were an immortal, and so he used you to become one himself. The crazy tycoon wasn't alone. He had a hunting dog who did everything he was ordered to do. White killed you, and when you resurrected with no memory, he lied to you. He gave you a false life, a false past, a false career, even a false mother. Yet, although White manipulated you into finding the Potion of Immortality, you also discovered some things you weren't supposed to. When that happened, like at the Hotel Doré in Paris, he killed you. And when you came back, he manipulated you again, making you start all over again. The last time that psycho killed you, he made you swallow mercury. That was a little mistake, because from then on, you started to remember small pieces from your past, which helped you to finish with him. Your findings led you to the ruins of the Church of St. Fergus in Scotland, where you remembered how you were made an immortal, and where you threw the psycho into a well. Kines de Ordunia, founder of the Order of the Flesh, transmuted your body in 1501 so you could return from the dead. However, he excluded one of the ingredients from the Potion of Immortality, mercury, without which you come back without your memory. The weirdest thing is that Hines was in your dream. You met him as a boy. The Coin of Judgment is the main ingredient of the Potion of Immortality. You believe that, if you can find one, you'll be able to undergo the same ritual, this time with Mercury, so that in the future you won't lose your memory again. A mysterious blind master appears in your dreams, but only there, because his name is not in any history book. You don't even know in which era you met him.
Hey, Boris. Say joke. You haven't parked the van yet? Nope. I'm gonna finish up with something first, and I'll get to that in a jiffy. What something? Surfing Facebook. It's important. Did they send you the results from your last checkup? Nope. Did I tell you he hit my knee with a little rubber hammer? It was crazy. My leg went boing, and I laughed my ass off. <laughs> now, I do it all the time. Boing! Boing! You try it. About this TV show. You know, the one where you saw Victoria Baxter? Which TV show was it that Baxter was on today? One with famous people nobody knows. They're having breakfast with journalists who don't know what they're talking about. And no one sees because they're on at a time when everyone's still snoring. Are you sure she said she was looking for a gnoc? No, no. They asked her what she'll do now that she lives in Paris. She said she'd make a sweep of the antique shops in the city in search of Japanese art, which I have a soft spot for, especially for the carvings. Did she happen to mention anything about her love for tobacco? Nope. Wait, yes. When they asked her how she liked her breakfast, she said... It's even better than the French standards. Happy birthday. Only a good pipe could improve it. Why were they interviewing her in the first place? Because they didn't have anyone else, I guess. <laughs> but they said she is one of the most important collectors in Europe and wants to start her own little Japanese museum in Paris. How much do you think we can ask Baxter for the sculpture? Oh, what a nuisance. But don't tell the boss I helped you, okay? Date? Origin? Author? It was made by Unke, the most highly valued sculptor from the K school in Japan at the end of the 12th century. Conservation state? It was in very bad shape, but Pauline's father, he did an amazing restoration. Around 600,000 euros. Happy birthday. There's something I need to ask you about our previous life in New York. Oh, choke. Really? Again? I know we've talked about it a lot of times, Boris, but I'm certain somewhere in my past, there's a key to who I am and why I'm like this. Oh, okay. Now tell me again, how did we meet? I was in the station, sitting on a bench, waiting for... you know. I know. You sat beside me, not saying a word. You offered me half a sandwich. I know we've talked about it a lot of times, Boris. But I'm certain, somewhere in my past, there's a key to who I am and why I'm like this. Oh, okay. I started to think that the demolished station was a church, and that we were members of the Inquisition. Why did I think that? No idea. You talked a lot of nonsense. I liked that, because you were acting crazier than me. <laughs> and you got food and things for us. I know we've talked about it a lot of times, Boris, but I'm certain somewhere in my past, there's a key to who I am and why I'm like this. Oh, okay. Do you think I could ever become Choke again? Well, Choke, you still are Choke. Younger, but time will change all that. You are less crazy, though. We're both improving, aren't we? I know we've talked about it a lot of times, Boris. But I'm certain, somewhere in my past, there's a key to who I am and why I'm like this. Oh, okay. What exactly was it like when you saw me die? and then resurrect for the first time. I laughed my ass off. I thought, so all that nonsense about eternal life is true. <laughs> I know we've talked about it a lot of times, Boris, but I'm certain somewhere in my past, there's a key to who I am and why I'm like this. Oh, okay. Do you have any idea why I went to that station in the first place? You were sure that Cadway was related to Cadwallader. 
and that Cadwallader had something to do with the Inquisition, and someone with ginger hair. You never told me that before. Maybe. Or maybe you've just forgotten that I have. I know we've talked about it a lot of times, Boris, but I'm certain somewhere in my past there's a key to who I am and why I'm like this. Oh, okay. I thought I asked you to buy ink for the printer. And I did. But there's no ink in the printer. But you asked me to buy it, that's all. Logical. Okay, so would you be so kind as to give me the ink cartridge for the printer, please? With pleasure, Choke. Just ask me. Happy birthday! Pauline. Tell me. Here, I guess you'll need this to take the pics. Oops, thanks. Uh, where was it? In the laptop slot. You left it there, I guess. Oh, sure. I, I, I emptied it yesterday. It was old pics. The, the, the ones we took from um, uh, that Tibetan mortar. Have you taken the photos of the statue? I'll have them in no time. Don't worry. Hey, I know what to gift Baxter. Are you sure we need to bribe people? It's not bribing. It's called diplomacy. Anyway, Baxter is a pipe aficionado, and it's time that we get rid of the billiard pipe. John, that costs money. We can't afford stupid gifts. It's not a stupid gift. It's a clever investment. <sighs> okay, John, you win. There's only one detail missing. Could you paint Baxter's B on the pipe? Okay. Give me a sample of that B and I'll take care of it. As soon as I print it. Here's the pipe. By the way, my website works again. Who do you think restarted the server, smartass? Oh, <laughs> oops. Thank you. I know I met your dad when I was choke, but I'd love to meet him now again, now that I'm myself. Why is that? I don't know. I just thought that when remembering that your dad hid his diary in the base of the cross. Everything you tell me, everything he did, he was special. Just like you. And complicated. Thanks anyway.
Of course I do, Choke. You gave it to me in Cadway Station, and I gave it back to you when you freed me from Happydale. Of course I do, Choke. You gave it to me in Cadway Station, and I gave it back to you when you freed me from Happy Day. Any progress with the statue's documentation? Not yet, but I'm on it. Have you taken the photos of the statue? I'll have them in no time. Don't worry. I saw some red drops in the shower. Did you hurt yourself or something? John, why do you think I took two showers today? I don't know. It came just after the first shower. What came? John, have you learned nothing about women in 500 years? Oh, right. <laughs> I get it. Talking about your period. Well, you had it a couple of weeks ago, didn't you? It's come up before. Tension, the debts. An email arrived from the Antiques Association of Paris for the annual party thing. I don't think we can go. T too much work. It's just one night. I mean, it's not like we get invited to a lot of costume par- Okay, you're right. Way too much work. How can you work with that music? It gives me energy. The opposite of those prehistoric lullabies that you like. Wait. If I tell you that it's a mysterious redhead playing this track, will you like it better? <laughs> so funny. Of course I do, Choke. You...
Here is Baxter's B, so you can paint it on the pipe. You're such a pest. Just a sec. The key is to never forget the happiest years of your life. In my case, 72, 77, and 82. The year I became the owner of Le Tout Petit. The year I met your mother. And the year you were born.
I already painted the bee on the pipe, but it's drying. Make it dry quick, or we won't have it in time. I painted the bee on the pipe. What do you think? Marvelous. Many thanks. There. I finally found the sculpture documents. Cool. There you go. I almost filled the card. You wanted to see them before? No need. You don't know how to take a bad picture. John! If things go well, maybe we can take a real holiday. Very far away. Oh, I thought you wanted to visit Lemur and Weasel again. Weasel will come one of these days to get a painting she needs, and to hell with Lemur. Hacker reformed, hacker buried. Oh, I'd love to see her again, and her kids. Well, we'll... John! I'm sorry about my negativity about all this. Sometimes I'm just so suspicious. Hey, don't worry about it. It's okay. No, no, you should stay here.
Baxter Mansion. How can I help you? Hi, I'm from Le Tout Petit Antique, and I... Welcome, Mr. Le Tout. Do you have an appointment? Yes, we scheduled an appointment for me to come to tell you about a precious Nyo carving. Wonderful. Wait one minute, please. Then ring again. Baxter Mansion, how can I help you? I'm the guy who rang before, the Neo guy. Welcome. I must apologize. I didn't schedule your appointment properly. However, you have piqued her curiosity. Wait till the gates open and then park in the yard, will you? Are you sure it's him? Yes. Sure. At last. Hi. Please, come in. Here's my card. But there's no information on it. Don't worry. It's not activated yet, Mr... John Yesterday. An appropriate name for an antique dealer, isn't it? <laughs> but I'm a historian, too. Even better, then. What do you specialize in? Satanism and sectarianism in the Middle Ages. No, no way. I just received the first copy of a book about a satanic sect in the Middle Ages. I can't show it to you yet, but it will make people talk. The writer is an American who, by the way, you're an American, aren't you? Yes, but I've traveled so much, I no longer know where I belong to. I don't envy you. I travel all the time. But the day I stop seeing myself as a Londoner, I'll forget who I am. You are absolutely right. However, I always ask myself... Sorry, Mr. Yesterday. We're not here to answer your questions, but mine. Why on earth am I wasting my time with you? Shit! Maybe you've heard I have a Neo by Unke. It's perfect and... Why can't I see it? Oh, sorry. Here are some photos of the sculpture and its authenticity documents. You think of everything. I like you. Please make yourself at home while I examine all this. You'll see the room is full of valuable pieces. Feel free to touch. You are, after all, a colleague.
I just received the first copy of a book about a satanic sect in the Middle Ages. You may remove your blindfolds, dearest disciples. Behold, Santa Brigida's greatest treasure. Where are we, Brother Hinas? Oh, that's none of your business, Brother Yago. It's written in an unknown language, one so rare it could even date back to the days of the Tower of Babel. No one has ever deciphered it, or managed to copy a single character from its alphabet. Come on, who are you speaking of? Blind men and morons? Do you dare to give it a try, Brother Giuseppe? Hey, why does he get to go first? That's not fair. Let's see. I don't understand the thing. These symbols. I... I can't stop. I'm trapped by them. Oh no! My god, what's happening to me? Why? Yago! Yago! Help me! Giuseppe! Do not touch him. There's nothing you can do for him now. No. Put your blindfolds back on. No. I'll take you to your cells. Never speak to anyone about what happened on this night. And remember, you have seen nothing. Nothing. Nothing.
Don't tell a soul. We'll have a good laugh tomorrow. I'm going to make Brother Botillo lose some weight. Before you can control the unknown sense, you must first learn to see through the eyes of yesteryear, young disciple. Your mind stores every single detail of everything you've seen. Close your eyes and say goodbye to today. Focus, breathe, then open them anew. And yesterday, and yesterday is here again. Is here again. I respect you, in spite of it all. It's not easy to observe the rule of St. Francis these days. And why don't you observe it as well? Science, logic, and history bid me otherwise. I feel like neither Giuseppe nor I have been just with you. For that, I apologize. <laughs> I knew you would come to your senses as soon as that Italian devil lost his grip on you. Dead dogs don't bite. You disgust me. You're a clueless, tattletale, brown nose who doesn't understand what he copies. And it's not just the books. It's the rule of St. Francis and all of that meaningless nonsense you observants constantly repeat. 
I'd rather be a brown nose than end up covered in shit, Brother Yago. And that's exactly how you will end up. You disgust me. You're a clueless, tattletale, brown nose who doesn't understand what he copies. And it's not just the books. It's the rule of St. Francis and all of that meaningless nonsense you observants constantly repeat. I'd rather be a brown nose than end up covered in shit, Brother Yago. And that's exactly how you will end up. Not only do you understand languages, you're also aided by demons like that painted old man that sometimes appears before you. If you really want to know who you are, you must first accept this. You are Satan's son. So what do I do? Should I devour a live goat? Sacrifice virgins? Kill myself to return to the hell whence I came? No. I must follow Hines' plan, whatever that may be. Hines wants you to follow Satan's path, but you believe in the righteous God. You must observe the rule of St. Francis. I would, but I'm afraid I'm prey to the same sin as Brother Hines, the sin that led Adam to eat from the tree of knowledge and condemn mankind. I want to know. Dark times are upon us. Giuseppe's death is only the beginning. Flee Santa Brigida and never look back. And leave Hines behind? He saved me. He gave me a new life. Books. Brothers. I can't do that. Why did you have to die? Who knows? Those Greek gods you love used to claim the beautiful first. And I don't mean to brag, but between you, Botillo, and me, there's just no comparison. I will never forget you, brother. Botillo sure won't forget me. At least not until you find out why Father Hines calls him so much. Did Hines give you a proper Christian burial as promised? I think you know the answer better than I do. Whether you're ready to admit it is another story.
When the Inquisition captured me, you found the dead body of my friend Alonzo, whose recently deceased corpse could pass as my own. Isn't that too much of a coincidence? I believe you have reached your own conclusion. But remember what I always tell you. Chance does not exist. It is Satan's hand. And sometimes it uses our own to achieve its goals. You knew that Giuseppe would die upon reading the book, didn't you? All I had were suspicions, the same as you. You said you appreciate me for my talent with languages. What will happen the day I'm no longer useful? Have you ever seen me do someone harm? Don't fret, although you are the devil's son. How could you ever cease to be useful? Say to Ribio? About last night. Nothing happened last night. Nothing! Do you think that Hines knew what was going to happen? You take that back. Father Hines is a saint, not a murderer. Where's the library? I don't know. Come on, you often disappear with Brother Hines. I'm sure that's where he takes you. Of course. I'm the best copyist in the Abbey. And who else would he trust to copy the secret books? And? He always blindfolds me, just like last night. It's better that way. I won't have to resist the temptation of reading heretic texts. When Giuseppe started to bleed, you did nothing to help him. It was the devil's doing. That was Satan's blood. It could have contaminated me. I helped him. Then get away from me. Later, upon returning to my cell, I thought I heard whipping in yours. That's not true. Do you remember that the abbot prohibited self-flagellation? Do you? Why? Why can't a pious man pay for his evil deeds? What evil deed did you perform last night? I thought nothing had happened. Go with God. About last night. Nothing happened last night. Nothing. What do you think happened exactly? Didn't I tell you already? It was the devil's doing. He has possessed that book. I thought the devil specialized in possessing people. Are you really that naive? He can possess the very air you breathe. I heard that about two years ago, in a village far away, the devil possessed a hog so that it would devour the son of a noble. That's amazing. What are you copying? A text lacking in righteousness. Hortensius by Cicero. If the book is everything you say it is, why are you copying it? Because that cursed father Ezekiel is contaminating the soul of our dear abbot. He manipulates him with his science and his art to lead him off the righteous path. I wouldn't rule out the use of magic either. But was it not the very same book? That led St. Augustine of Hippo to embrace faith? What's that? Oh, yes, yes, but God can write straight on crooked lines. That does not prove that the book is not impure. Furthermore, St. Augustine was a sinner before he was a saint. Grant me chastity and continence, but not yet. 
pervert. You must be thrilled now that Giuseppe is dead. No one will ever call you Botillo again. Shh. Remember, we know nothing. What was that, Brother Botillo? I can't hear you. You're acting just like him. I expected more out of you. You must be thrilled now that Giuseppe is dead. No one will ever call you Botillo again. Shh. Remember, we know nothing. Calm down. I'm not going to tell anyone. But the devil can hide anywhere. Only God knows who is watching us and where from. May I take some books from the shelf? Absolutely not. It's time to write, not to read. You must be thrilled now that Giuseppe is dead. No one will ever call you Botillo again. Shh. Remember, we know nothing. Calm down. I'm not going to tell anyone. But the devil can hide anywhere. Only God knows who is watching us and where from. You must be thrilled now that Giuseppe is dead. No one will ever call you Botillo again. Shh. Remember, we know nothing. What was that, Brother Botillo? I can't hear you. You're acting just like him. I expected more out of you. Where's the library? I don't know. Come on, you often disappear with Brother Hinas. I'm sure that's where he takes you. Of course. I'm the best copyist in the Abbey. And who else would he trust to copy the secret books? And? He always blindfolds me, just like last night. It's better that way. I won't have to resist the temptation of reading heretic texts. May I come in, Father Hines? My door is always open to you, Brother Yago. I don't understand why you always favor Brother Toribio. You are the better pupil, no doubt. But you'll be better off if you draw a little attention to yourself. On the other hand, commending Brother Toribio helps me win over those he sucks up to. The observance. What do you think of Father Ezekiel? He stands up to the observance and understands the world through reason. So brave and yet so naive. The only reason that governs this world is that of your father. The devil. I do prefer him over that gang of lunatics, no doubt. But I must proceed with caution and not show him too much esteem. By the way, he should be showing me how that printing press of his works sometime soon. Don't you think our abbot is a saint? Oh, no doubt. He has a view of the future and would certainly embrace anything that Father Ezekiel and the like propose. But he knows that without the observance, he would lose his grip over the monastery. That's why he tries to please them. And he's not the only one. 
I know you're not fond of Father Diego and the other observants. How could I be? Their insistence on returning to the rule of St. Francis is ridiculous. Their idea of poverty makes me laugh. You need money to preserve the knowledge of books and a full stomach to think with clarity. But you pretend to like them. I must. If not, they'd rally against me in my library. They'd find out what I'm hiding sooner or later, and they wouldn't like it. What makes you so attached to Ursus? His gratitude, just as yours, bonds me to you. You saved Ursus's life as well? What had he done? Oh, I, I don't even remember. You've forgotten? When the Inquisition wants to execute someone, they don't need an excuse. Who cares? You said you would grant Giuseppe a Christian burial. Have you done so already? Ursus took care of it before the morning prayers. Don't worry about it. I'll pray for him. Don't waste your prayers. Keep them for you and for me. But send them to your father, Satan. Beg him to grant us the ability to read that book. Where were we last night? It's best if you don't know. Why? You are my most prized possession. I don't want to lose you. What if I had read the book? Would you have left me to die? Not in the slightest. I wanted you to see the power of the book. But you're not ready yet. What if Toribio had read the book? That coward. He would never have even tried. I only took him to incriminate him. I was afraid he'd badmouth me to the observance. Now he won't dare. The book has a Y on its cover. What does it mean? I don't know, Brother Yago. My name is Miguel. Yago is only the name you gave me after helping me escape the Inquisition. It starts with a Y. Don't jump to conclusions. Do you know anything about my father? Yes. He rebelled against God and turned into Satan. He stayed in the shadows for centuries, but one day he will rise. I I'm talking about my human father, the Duke of Fuentenegra. You don't have a human father. I don't follow. In order to avoid further problems with the Inquisition, the Duke confessed that you weren't his son. Years before, an old man who claimed to be a messenger of the King of Naples spent a night at your father's estate. The next morning, he had disappeared, leaving behind all of his belongings. His clothes were lying on the bed, covered in blood. And among the clothes and blood, they found a happy and healthy baby, you. The Duke, who hadn't managed to conceive an heir or bastard, kept quiet and gave you his family name. And no one ever heard from that old man again. It was all the devil's doing, no doubt. An act of your true father. You have denied it countless times, but what if the Inquisition is still looking for me? The plan worked perfectly, Iago. My name is Miguel. Your name is whatever I say it is. Miguel de Fuentenegra was devoured by a diabolical pig in that dungeon three years ago. That's what the Inquisition believes, and... <laughs> Can't think of a better story. Sometimes I dream of returning to Fentanegra and... Don't be a fool. What if someone recognized you? As I've said before, I didn't give you a new life for you to throw it away in vain. Your place is here. At least until we decipher that book. When you saved me, you were already master copyist of Santa Brigida. And Fentanegra is more than 20 days away. How did you find out about me? One of my most grateful pupils is now a scribe of the Holy Office. He knows of my commitment to understanding ancient books, unknown languages, and lost knowledge. When the Inquisition set their sights on you, he contacted me. I left immediately and arrived just in time to save you. I feel like I'm wasting my time here in Santa Brigida. Your gift for languages is very useful. And it will be so even more in the future. Well, I've got my own ideas for the future. Speak. You know how much I enjoy ancient mythology. Maybe I could focus on writing about it, like 
The fact that I allow you to read certain books does not mean you can flaunt this knowledge. Anyone who speaks of pagan myths will automatically become a target of the Inquisition. Do you wish to go through that again? Or do you have any better ideas? I'd like to follow in Father Ezekiel's footsteps and do something with my hands. I like the forge, to see iron come to life, like Vulcan, the blacksmith deity. Your talent lies not in your hands, but in your head. I will not let you put it to waste. Any other ideas? Since I understand all languages, maybe I could be a missionary and evangelize the Americas. What part of I am Satan's son have you not yet understood? Any other ideas? Listen to me. You are the devil's son. There's nothing you can do about it. Make the most of the gift he's given you. But how? His is the book that killed Giuseppe. Perhaps when you decipher it, we won't have to hide anymore. Then why don't you let me give it a shot? I must first test it on other subjects. I can't risk losing you. I could use a mirror to read the book's reflection, just like Perseus did to avoid turning into stone when looking at Medusa. Oh, nonsense. Mythology is nothing but myths, legends, and lies. But the power of the book is real. You've seen it. If the book is my father's work, why would he kill me? Because the book is not your father. Does it have eyes? Does it know who you are? Can we be sure it will recognize you? Can we know if it has a will of its own? Well, I'm willing to take that risk. I would protect you with my own life. If you want to risk your own, you'll have to do it over my dead body. I... I think I'm not cut out for the priesthood. I'd like to get married. You know, meet a woman and... And? Do you think I'm a virgin? I will give you, not one, but many women. When you reach the priesthood I have planned for you. But let time take its course. What else do you have in mind? Good morning, Father Ezekiel. The day appreciates the epithet, but doesn't deserve it. What happened? Did you know that Queen Isabella is coming tomorrow to see my printing press in action? And in just one hour, I must perform a trial before Brother Hines, here, in this very workshop. No. Nobody ever informs us Razophores. Well, there will be no trial. Somebody stole all my letter E-types. Huh? I won't call for him. He's always so busy, he won't even remember. Maybe you just misplaced the letters. I heard about a condition called Lystexia that... I never make mistakes. The letter thief, in all his clumsiness, tore his habit on one of the pins of the printing press. You said they stole all letters except one, right? Yes. One was stuck in the mold, and I haven't had the time to pull it out. Here, in case it helps you find the rest. Did you know that sometimes I have the strangest dreams? In fact, I dreamt that I was in a secret library within the monastery. Do you have any idea where that kind of library would be if it were real? Hmm. No. Although if I had more information, we could deduce its hypothetical location. Who knows? Sometimes the Lord uses dreams to remind us of things we don't know we know. Do you have any idea who the thief could be? I only know it's not me. The rest could all be guilty. I don't think it's him, but 
Could it be Father Hines? I doubt it. He supported me all along. Although the printing press would put an end to his privileges as master copyist. So who knows? What about Giuseppe? He's the Abbey's greatest prankster, no doubt. And he's been missing all morning. I'm sure he's up to no good. What if Turibio did it? Hmm, could be. That radical observant disapproves of everything I do, although he is a coward. Would he dare to do something like that? What if this is lay brother Ursus's doing? He would only do such a thing following Brother Hines's instructions. Poor Ursus. It's as if someone had removed his free will. I suppose Father Emigio is above all suspicion. It's not easy for our prior. Caught between those radical observants and the knowledge that progress is good for the community. If it was him, rough times await us all. What if I did it? Okay. Act like you're confessing. Father Ezekiel, I confess. I stole all your letters. <laughs> Brother Iago. You're as bad at acting as you are noble in spirit. Father Diego can't stand you. Another fanatic. But his excessive observance of the rule of St. Francis has kept him far from the baths since last spring. My workshop would still reek of his nauseating stench. What exactly are those types you say were stolen? There are small metal letters that I place in line. When pressed against the paper, they print the ink. You could try writing without the letter E. I could write an entire book. Oh yeah? Please start. Thank God Almighty for visitors arriving on this day at the Holy Catholic Sanctum that is Santa Brigida. Ha! <laughs> you said the! How did you get Her Majesty to visit the Abbey? Ever since my friend Johannes invented it, the printing press has enchanted nobles and commoners alike, and the Queen is no exception. Being aware of this fact, and after receiving approval from our abbot, I sent her a missive stating that Santa Brigida housed the first printing press in Spain. Now I wish I'd never had the nerve. Why do you want to test it with Father Hines? As master copyist, he must approve quality of all printed materials. But that won't happen now. The meeting is in less than an hour, and I don't have letters E. I won't call for him. He's always so busy, he won't even remember. How did you get a printing press? The inventor, my friend Johannes, sent it to me. I worked with him during my European travels years ago. He was going to send it to Segovia. But I convinced him by saying I would make the most of it, that I would show it to important people, which won't happen tomorrow if the Queen arrives and I print Isabla and Ferdinand, monarchs of Spain. Do you oppose those who practice a strict observance of the rule of St. Francis? Not at all. They are the ones who oppose common sense which is the tool our good lord gave man's aid in his survival. Diego, Toribio, and all of those loonies want to take us back into the Dark Ages. We're in the 15th century for crying out loud. You are a man of science. Isn't that somehow at odds with faith? Science is the study of divine creation. How could it be at odds with faith? What is at odds with almost everything is human understanding that never manages to grasp the meaning of our good Lord or his creation. That's what science is for, to enlighten our understanding and bring us closer to God. Is Father Hines closer to you or to the observance? It's hard to say. On the one hand, he helps me with my research. On the other, he praises useless fanatics like Toribio. But Father Hines is an intelligent man. I'm sure he knows what he's doing.
a beauty, isn't she? To think that a few miserable letters are going to make her look bad in front of the Queen. A metal plate, previously inked after hitting it with leather balls. That's where the types or letters go. That's where you put the paper you want to print on. It folds the sheet and moves it forward. If I'm not mistaken, it must be in the east wing of the Abbey. The door has to be... Hmm, that's strange. It should be where Paolo de San Leocadio's painting is. You know why I'm in a monastery? I sanded down the handle of a torch holder at my father's house and split the wood in two, but used molasses to hold it together. When one of father's concubines put a torch in it, the torch holder broke and the torch fell onto her. She survived, but never again did father wish to lie with her. You know why I'm in a monastery? I send it when what she said. Don't you dare bring that down, Brother Yago. When I see it, I get the urge to draw. And I've got tons of more important things to do.
That is a periscope, invented by my friend Johannes and yours truly. Inside, there are two mirrors that, placed at 45 degree angles, allow the user to see without being seen. Unfortunately, one of the mirrors broke several days ago, and I haven't had the time to replace it. Please, take it. And if you manage to fix it, all the better. Why did you have to die? Who knows? Those Greek gods you love used to claim the beautiful first. And I don't mean to brag, but between you, Botillo, and me, there's just no comparison. I will never forget you, brother. Botillo sure won't forget me. At least not until you find out why Father Hines calls him so much. Did Hines give you a proper Christian burial as promised? I think you know the answer better than I do. Whether you're ready to admit it is another story. The other day, 
When Brother Botia was sleeping and Hines was not in his study, I snuck in through this window. It's a bit risky and not an easy feat. But oh, the pleasure that comes from knowing that I could steal something from our superior if I so desired. I think it's the first time I see you working without your specs. That's my fault. When I saw that the letters E were missing, I searched the entire workshop. I was so nervous that I accidentally tossed them out the window. Isn't it cold in here? I like working with natural light. I asked the royal wheelwrights of Burgos to bring me some window panes, but I'm still waiting. For now, the only thing I do is throw salt on the windowsill to avoid the formation of ice. I've seen you staring at the painting of the Gates of Hell a few times. Do you like it? No. It terrifies me. Every time I sin, I go to it and repeat to myself, You will burn in hell, Toribio. You deserve eternal punishment, you corrupt, perverted pig. Burn, Toribio, burn! No. I just admire your taste in art. If Turbio likes it, it must be good, I tell myself. Oh, yes, true. I've seen you staring at the painting of the Gates of Hell a few times. Do you like it? No, it terrifies me. Every time I sin, I go to it and repeat to myself, You will burn in hell, Toribio. You deserve eternal punishment, you corrupt, perverted pig. Burn, Toribio, burn! Me? I'm interested in the same thing you are. Each time you sin, I say, you will burn in hell, you corrupt, perverted pig. Burn, Botillo, burn! Giuseppe's demon lives in you. Say one more atrocity and I'll tell the abbot! Regarding Ezekiel's printing press trial? Yes. Oh, 
Nothing. I'm just nervous, that's all. I hope it works. I really couldn't care less, to be honest. The books I'm interested in will never be printed. Although, it does indeed spark my curiosity. When the Inquisition captured me, you found the dead body of my friend Alonzo, whose recently deceased corpse could pass as my own. Isn't that too much of a coincidence? I believe you have reached your own conclusion. But remember what I always tell you. Chance does not exist. It is Satan's hand. And sometimes it uses our own to achieve its goals. You knew that Giuseppe would die upon reading the book, didn't you? All I had were suspicions, the same as you. You said you appreciate me for my talent with languages. What will happen the day I'm no longer useful? Have you ever seen me do someone harm? Don't fret, although you are the devil's son. How could you ever cease to be useful?
Don't touch any of that. I beg you. If I can't use the printing press, I'll have to use some archaic form of writing. I gave that spool to Brother Giuseppe. A very fine, almost invisible, yet resistant thread. It must have had about ten meters left when I gave it to him, but it seems he used it up. Are you sure the library I dreamt of could only be... Where the Divine Paolo painting hangs? You can only be sure of two things. Our good Lord is foolproof, and he created me in his own image and likeness. All other creations are capable of erring. gave that spool to Brother Giuseppe, a very fine, almost invisible, yet resistant thread. What did you do with the thread that Brother Ezekiel gave you? Who knows? It's me we're talking about, so probably nothing good. Have a fun trying to figure it out on your own.
You dropped something, Brother Terebio. Mind your own business, Brother Yago. That bastard! Call Father Hines immediately, and have Botillo come as well. I won't denounce him. The look on his face will be a greater prize.
Hello, Ursus. I forgot my scapulary in Father Hines' study. Can I come in to get it? Hello, Ursus. Father Hines wants to see you. Hello, Ursus. You've got tomato sauce from lunch on your face. Whoops. No. <clears throat> Hello, Ursus. You know, sometimes I feel isolated just like you. I think in non-existent languages. Not even I understand myself. <clears throat> What did I tell you? Brother Yago, this room is forbidden. How did you find it? It was pure chance. Only you have the key. Care to explain? The boy has done the right thing, Remigio. He seeks wisdom, like we all do. Knowledge is power. Power to transcend. Power to be... Oh, God. <gasps> What's happening? I can't stop. Reading? Oh God, I can't see! I'm blind! Blind! Where is your justice, my lord? I I'm sorry, I... Shut up. Your recklessness has separated us from the book. Father Remigio has called the Vatican Courier so that the book is taken to the Holy See. Before... Yes! Before they take it away, we must find it and steal it. Before you came, I read part of the book, and I understood it. It's about... You won't believe this. A transmutational ritual that turns men into something different. Immortal beings. Look, this odd coin is the key. I knew I wasn't wrong about you. Get ready. <laughs> We leave at dawn. What? Follow me, son of Satan. Together, we shall defeat death. Congratulations, Mr. Yesterday. The state of the Niyo is enviable. Thank you. How much are you asking for it? 600,000 euros. Careful, you're starting to become a real Parisian. I'd love to say yes right now, but I never decide on the spot. Antiques require time. I see. Oh, I almost forgot. I have a gift for you. Brilliant. You really know my taste. Many, many thanks. Let's do this. I have your card. I'll call you. Tomorrow I leave on a trip, so it may take me a couple of days to get back to you. Shit! 
Now leave me. You've made me lose too much time already. Amanda Royce. Start now. It's done. I'm sorry, Vulcan. My good Vulcan. Please, Pauline, be sensible. Sensible? It's you who's always changing their mind for no reason. Two hours ago, we needed that sale to save the shop, and now you leave everything for a fucking book. It's not the book. Don't you get that? No, John. I don't understand. Tell me. Why suddenly are the Neo and Baxter no longer important? Honestly, I really don't think she's as interested as we thought she'd be. Okay. We wasted a whole morning, that's all. But that means we're still short on money. That trip is too expensive, John. We can delay some payments. It wouldn't be the first time. And this is important for me. Okay, John. You have your priorities. You pretend you care about the shop. But the only thing you really care about is yourself. I'm doing this for both of us. And I'll do something for both of us. Just go now. We'll talk about it when you come back. If you come back. Oh, and take this. Baxter gave it to me. It's supposed to be your card. Okay. What if I offer you 200? I told you I can't. 300. It's just a tiny change of seat. I'm sorry, but... 400. I'm terribly alone, and he'll be more comfortable here. Please, don't insist. 500. My last offer. Um, uh, I'll see what I can do. Thanks, honey. A and please, bring me two margaritas to celebrate, will you? Here, sir, you can sit beside the lady. Thanks for your kindness and sorry for the inconvenience. Hi. Hi. My name is John Yesterday. Amanda Royce. Fancy a margarita? I hate flying and I asked for two drinks to put me to sleep as quickly as possible. But since I have you as company, maybe I don't need these. Here's to coming back home. Hey, have you been away for long? It's been three years since I last visited New York. Oh dear, don't tell me you're another casualty. Casualty? The victim of a French girl. I don't know how they do it, but whenever they see a handsome American, au revoir, New York. Bonjour, Paris. Uh, yes, sort of. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have brought that up. Did you two have an argument? I'm sorry, I shouldn't have asked. Oh no, don't worry. Maybe it'll be good for me to talk about it. Who's to blame? It's nobody's fault. Or both. We argued over the, the same old shit. Money. I get anxious. And she got nervous too. And then I left. I'd never said goodbye to her like that. To be honest, I don't know what to expect when I get back home. Oh, I'm so sorry. How funny that we should meet here now. My story is very similar. The only difference is that there's no way I can save it anymore. Do you know what you'll do when you see her again? I should tell her I'm sorry. Sometimes I just don't listen to anybody. She says I'm a busybody. That's why I'm no good at restoring antiques. Maybe you're right. Let time take its course. Hey, in the meantime, the important thing is what you'll do in New York. I have an idea. I can show you how much the city has changed while you've been away. What do you say? Uh, I can try, but I'm only in the city for a very short time. Do it for me, please. You won't regret it. Take my card and call me anytime. 
Huh, thanks. I think mine are in the... Are you okay? Oh, it's been a really... A really... <sighs> I'll give it back to you in no time, dear.
Reception. Hi, this is room 903. Can you please wake me up at 7.30? Yes, sir. Could you give me a phone number for Leopold Kovac? Let's see if he's in the directory. Yes. There are three pages of Leopold Kovacs. Do you know where he lives? Uh, sorry, no. Then I'm afraid I can't help you, sir. Could you please check how many Amanda Royces there are in the phone book, please? Sure, sir. Three, four, five pages, sir. Oh, <laughs> great, thanks. Could you please bring me up some dinner? Yes, sir. What do you want? It really doesn't matter. I'm not even hungry. It's just in case. We've just hired a Japanese chef from the Kyoto Hilton. Fancy some sushi? Sure, yeah, that'll be great. I can't find the Wi-Fi password. Where can I find it? Maybe I forgot to give you the paper. Both Annette and the password are Merrick Hotel underscore free, all caps. Okay, that's easy. Thanks. I just want to thank you for everything you did for me. That's very kind. But to be honest, more than a thank you, I'd like a tip like the one you gave the waiter. Amanda Royce. Hi, Amanda. It's me, John, from the plane. John, I was wondering if I'd see you again. What's up? It just so happens that your company has published a writer I'm looking for. Leopold Kovacs, his name? Hey, maybe you could put me in contact with him? Ah. Uh. That way I could meet him, and after settling our business affairs, I could spend the rest of the day visiting New York with you. 
Good idea. I was starting to think that your maybe was just a diplomatic no. Let me check out the Kovac thing. I'll tell you more tomorrow. Hello? John, yesterday? They told me that you want to see me. My name is Leopold Kovac. When can you come? Right now. Okay. Um, write my address down. I'm sorry. I'll get right to the point, Mr. Kovac. No, no, there's no need. Take your time. I have all day for you. <laughs> there's no emergency. Ask me, I'll be completely honest. We're here to help, aren't we? Why exactly did you write about the cursed book? It was a Trabex assignment. In the beginning, it was not a book. It was a private investigation for an anonymous sponsor. He paid me good money. And I said to myself, hey, Leopold, you mustn't miss this opportunity. No, no, you're not a kid anymore. You have an ex-wife and three cats to feed. And, and, and also... Did you ever find the cursed book? No, no, the, the trick with these things is to not find them. Because if you do, Say goodbye to the mystery. And without the mystery, uh, you say goodbye to your sales. I just made up some theories on its supposed origins and wrote some anecdotes that my informant told me, like the one about the painting. I've written seven books about lost relics, and I've always been very careful never to investigate too much. You see, we're not the uh, police, are we? The first one was Nefertiti's tomb, where I narrated the... Which was amazing, because I... And who was that so-called informant? I only know his surname, Scarpetta. He contacted me while I was researching in the Vatican. He promised to tell me all sorts of legends about the book if I published my own book about it. I asked Trabix, and they liked the idea. Do you think you could find him? No, no, he always contacted me in the strangest of ways. I, uh, no. Maybe he's a criminal, and he's afraid that I might call the authorities. People are so weird. The other day, this guy at the Venice office, he looks at me, he says, You, you... Exactly which theories about its origins did you find? They speak of similar books in the Sumerian and Viking Chronicles, and even in certain fragments excluded from the Bible. In my book, I reasoned they could all be our cursed book, but <laughs> who knows? I'll be honest here, because I trust you, okay? I don't think there's a single connection, no. No, but one does have to sell books, of course. <laughs> I did something similar in Forge of the Grail, my third book. Did you read it? Did no. Anyway. What can you tell me about the relationship between the Order of the Flesh and the book. According to my informant, it was a satanic sect founded by some Gerard, some Jim, Jerry, I don't know. Hines? Hines? No, no. Anyway, it's all in my book. The thing is that they were in Ireland. No, uh, Scotland. They were in search of the Philosopher's Stone, and, uh, no, that wasn't it. You mentioned a painting. Yes, according to my informant, somewhere in the Vatican, there's a painting showing the cursed book. He even showed me a picture, the, the one I used for my book's cover. But the cover illustration for my fifth book, Montezuma's Lost Gold? Did, did you read? Anyway, it's even more interesting.
I really should be going now. It's getting late. No! No, 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 it's not late. It's early. Are you sure you don't want to stay? Maybe we can eat something while I tell you. Sure, yeah. Well, maybe on another occasion. I'm much obliged, Mr. Kovac. You see how easy it was to do me this little favor, Leopold? And we've managed to keep Seven Fingers unharmed. It could have been much worse. This is John yesterday. I think I left my phone at your place. Will you phone me at the hotel if you find it? I think I lost my cell. Maybe I left it somewhere in the hotel. Let me see. Hmm. If it's here, we haven't found it yet. Do you have Diablo? You mean the burrito? Burrito Diablo? Yes, I guess. Can you please have one sent to my room? Of course, sir.
My name is John Yesterday. In the meantime, if you want... Wie modus im Morgen verdagre, wa? Liege vor an dich. Wiest der Honske ab wieder? Dit neue Tige stell, so wer over dit. Sorry. Good morning. You've almost convinced me you're the happy prince I'm looking for, Mr. Yesterday. Almost. There's a closed box on my hat. Do not touch it. Do not damage it. Open it, and you'll open your own past and future. What's in the box? Something that you, if you are you, gave to the founder of my order, and that came down to me through the generations. I won't tell you anything more. I want to see the surprised look on your face. Can I open it like I want? No, you must open it as it's supposed to be opened. So I must find the key? Possibly. This is absurd. Why don't you just give me what you want to give me? Because, as I already told you, I'm not really sure that you are you. I don't even know if you are the one I'm looking for. I can't trust you. Well, what if I just take it away? I'm aiming at you from a treetop 100 meters away from here. Dying is a disgusting experience, as you may know. Are you Scarpetta? I thought you were a man of culture. I'm Hans Christian Andersen, renowned Danish writer. Very funny. Kovacs said you had something to do with the Vatican. That's not completely true. Maybe in the past, but we'll talk about it when you open the box. Why did you help Kovac in his investigation? I did it in exchange for obtaining a certain symbol on the cover of the book. A symbol that's proven quite useful in luring you. Your Danish sounds like Italian, like your surname. Oh, and you certainly remember how Danish was pronounced in Hans Christian Andersen's days. Where I came from doesn't matter. Aren't you going to help me? What's the point of making up a game to put someone to the test if you then tell him what he's supposed to do? I can't see a microphone or a loudspeaker, but you hear me and I hear you. They're like the Emperor's new clothes. They're there, but nobody can see them. At least, not until you open the box. But then you'll be too busy with my surprise.
Aren't you going to help me? What's the point of me? What am I supposed to do with the remote? What do you think? It must be to attract something that's far away. Will it come by earth, air, or sea? What's this cable for? It's not for your smartphone. Don't worry, it's already charged. It's the same picture I gave Kovac for his book's cover. The only difference is that he doesn't know that the Treaty of the Flesh exists. I found a portrait of myself under one of the benches. Of you? You still have to prove that you are you. It's a portrait of the one I'm looking for, drawn by Michelangelo Buonarroti himself. My predecessor in my position told me that he drew it from descriptions given to him by the founder of my order. Get a load of that, all of you who think that robot portraits are a modern invention.
Good morning. Shh. Good day. No make noise. What are you looking at? Look, bird. This hour more good. Park no noise. Me search more good. Can I borrow those for a moment? No, I sorry. No can. What's the name of that bird? Not no name your language. In mine is Grmusha. That's Serbian. It means warbler. That. Lawrence is warbler. You know Serbian and birdology? No. Well, maybe. But from a long time ago. I have a weird memory. How is it that you find the bird better when there's no noise? Because sing. Not hear. Sing beauty. More good any song. But sing rebounds. I know not tree. So you like birds? All animal. One time, small animal sacrifice for me. I shame for people many time. Never shame for animal. Maybe you've seen a man on a tree with your binoculars? No, I no see. But time see men do kisses among trees. Me shame. No say, park boss. Do you come to the park every day? I work park, garden work. I happy, before, I security guard. Always problems, violence, violence is shame. I, please change. Where are you from? Country exists no more. Me run, all lose. Why did you escape from your country? War. Friends, they killed. No stand fear and fled, but no shame. Life more important. How many years ago did you leave your country? Twenty-three year ago, but I no learn American. Speak little to people. Do you want to go back to your country? Nothing of me there. Only bad memory. Memory like sea. If away, splashes. If close, you sink. The gardening card is yours? Park gives to park workers. Very practical. And the image of the dog? Best friend. He saved life. What's the dog's name? Spinel, like dog of Emilia Costa Rica, cinema director of my country. It's a spaniel, isn't it? You know dogology? Where's your dog now? Up there, dog heaven. He died day before I go to America. Oh, I'm sorry, my friend. You good man, you friend animal. I lend binoculars, but small moment, okay? No problem. I'll give them back to you in no time.
quick. Binocular give. I hear birds sing. There you go. Many thanks for the binoculars. Okay. Tell me if you want more time. Knowledge, Cater. I've been searching for it all my life. Why do I speak and understand every language? Am I really the Devil's son? Is that the only thing that worries you? You know I'm taking risks for you. If Hines or your husband find out... You think my husband knows anything? Every time he tries to mount me and he doesn't get a hard on, he knows something's up, but he doesn't know why, or whom I spend my nights with. But it's not the nights I'm worried about. I'm scared of Hines. The closer we get to our goal, the more obsessed he becomes. Do you think he's losing his mind? Not yet. The ritual of transmutation will be the first step towards what I've always longed for. And yet, you don't seem excited at all. I'm tired of killing. You were amazing in the last rituals. It's obvious you enjoy them. That's the problem. Why don't we run away today? To hell with my husband. Hines, the order, the ritual, everything. I wish it was that easy. I've been looking for those coins for ten years. Then let's steal them. I can't. If it wasn't for Hines, I'd never have read the Treaty of the Flesh. And that's what put us on their track. Without him, the Order wouldn't exist, and we would never have found the coins. I can't fail him now. What about me? I... I must leave you now, Cater. I can't make him wait today. Nor me. Not forever.
Hines. My good Vulcan, about time you showed up. Come here. Good Ursus and I have something to show you. I hope Ursus hasn't beaten him too much. The last victim was in such a state that I couldn't even torture him. Oh, don't worry. But it may take you some time to wake him up. I'm sorry. I'm late. I overslept. Don't worry. As long as you oversleep alone, as a deacon of the Holy Church, you can't afford the least scandal. And we can't always throw your whores into the well. Today is the day. The key to absolute knowledge will be ours. The key to immortality. That's not what I seek. I know, but remember, limitless life, limitless knowledge. The entrance to the basement is open. What? Open? Are you nuts, Ursus? Hurry, finish tying up the prisoner and stand guard at the chapel door. No one can come in or out but me, Vulcan, Sir Roderick, or his slutty wife. Good. Let's get to the important part. Prepare the prisoner as only you know how. Torture him, but save the best for the meeting of the Order. Try the same thing you did to the Saxon moron. The guests have come long and far. They'll be thirsty for the blood of our prisoner. The first transmuted being in history. The first immortal. What? And what about Frey Seokan? Oh, in the well. And this rascal was eavesdropping. I'll be in the workshop getting ready for the ritual. Do a good job. His cries will inspire me. You turn the handle to separate the two boards as much as possible. Then you put the prisoner's ankle between them. Then you turn the handle in the opposite direction so the nails pierce the flesh. And he bleeds. You turn the handle then.
Tell me, Hines. You called me that upstairs. Remember, we're not in public, my good Falcon. You're right, Lord Vile. As of tomorrow, I will cease to pretend that I'm Father Hitner's parish priest of St. Fergus Church in Inverloch, and you stop pretending you're Deacon Yago. How are you coming along with the ritual preparations? There's a lot I must get ready for, my good Vulcan. We've reached the peak of over two decades of searching, and we cannot fail. Do you think this time we'll get it right? Sure. We only needed the coins. I've got the rest of the ingredients down. But I won't prepare the potion until the very last moment, right before the ritual. Do you really think they're from the devil? Without a doubt. You've seen the pentagrams on one of the sides. The same symbols have been used with different meanings by different cultures. And don't you think that Satan, Prince of the Cosmos, wouldn't claim the symbol that identifies him? I don't doubt his power, but... Don't argue, Vulcan. It's just that, since Brother Siokan found the coins in an old Viking boat, maybe that should be our new destination. Maybe there we can find the civilization that wrote the Treaty of the Flesh. Tomorrow, my good Vulcan, we'll be immortal. We won't need the book anymore. But how much more knowledge can be hidden in there? Oh, is there any higher knowledge than the one that allows you to reign over death? According to what I read in the Treaty of the Flesh, two people can drink from a potion created with one coin. Tell me something I don't know. The kid will drink first. Who will drink second? When we're sure it works, I'll drink. Then we'll prepare more potion with the second coin. You, my faithful helper, will drink from it. Then Sir Roderick. Sir Roderick? Why him? Without him, we wouldn't have this church falcon, nor an alibi, nor anything else. He deserves it. What would happen if we prepared the potion with the coin, but excluded one of the ingredients? Which one? The aim of salt and sulfur is to purify the soul before its return. Without those ingredients, the drinker would come back with a contaminated soul. A demon. A monster. Interesting. What would happen if we prepared the potion with the coin, but excluded one of the ingredients. Which one? Mercury ensures that the transmuted being comes back to life with his memory intact. It would be horrible if we forgot to add mercury to our potion. But, as I'm sure you understand, I can't allow myself to make such a mistake. What would happen if we prepared the potion with the coin, but excluded one of the ingredients? Which one? Hmm. Iron is used to forge the soul again, and gold to make it come back to life. I'm not sure what would happen if we skipped one of those. A soulless being? Or perhaps the body wouldn't come back to life? What would happen if we prepared the potion with the coin, but excluded one of the ingredients? Which one? According to the Treaty of the Flesh, fire is used to honor an unknown entity. Satan. I'm not that sure. But I am. Plus, we need fire to melt the coin of judgment. What would happen if we prepared the potion with the coin, but excluded one of the ingredients? Which one? I'd like to clarify something about the kid. I feel weird torturing a kid. Maybe we can find another volunteer. I don't know what bothers me more, Vulcan. The sudden hint of a conscience within your dark soul, or your questioning of my orders. 
We said we would not use servants of Sir Roderick as victims. The kid was eavesdropping, Vulcan. What will happen when the mother starts looking for him? Oh, you're right. Oh, well, luckily we're in no shortage of poison. The kid is taking the place that Seokan deserved for finding the coins. He was one of ours. But we can't just get a random kid and make him immortal. He'll be too powerful. Tell me something I don't know. He'll be tied until we prove the potion has worked and has no secondary effects. Then we'll throw him in the well, where he'll enjoy immortality without becoming a nuisance. The kid is not easy to torture. I mean, I've never tortured such a tiny body. I hope I don't make a mistake. Oh, I trust your skill, Vulcan. Hmm. I'll never understand why he can be so loyal to you while he still believes in the Christian God. I remember, I saved his life. Some people value such a thing. Maybe we don't need Ursus to mount guard at the church door. I close the door, take the key, and problem solved. No, I'd rather have him there. Just in case Sir Roderick comes. I mean, Lord Behemoth. Hmm. Maybe we shouldn't have killed the Saxon moron. You seem to think otherwise when you tortured him. What if he served someone, and now they're looking for him? He'd have confessed. Whom could he be serving? The Inquisition. Bah! If the Inquisition knew of our existence, they'd come with a small army instead of infiltrating a moron among our members. It's very strange that our Spanish friend hasn't arrived yet. He's always the first one. We'll never be thankful enough to him. It's a shame we must kill him tomorrow. What? We'll be immortal, Vulcan. We won't need anybody's money anymore. The Order of the Flesh will die tomorrow. I don't trust Sir Roderick. I do. Besides, we need him. There are some doors that no commoner can open, no matter how immortal he is. My father was the Duke of Fuentenegra. Your father is Satan. Miguel de Fuentenegra died in the dungeon I saved you from. What will happen to Lady Cat here? That cold fish. I guess her legitimate master and husband, Lord Behemoth, will kill her tomorrow. Did you know, she can't even satisfy him anymore.
You remember Hines said I can enter and leave whenever I want, right? Yes, yes. And Sir Roderick, and his wife, too. I made that metal glove for you. You'd never use it against me, would you? I'll take that as a maybe not. Your leg, it's bleeding, isn't it? Well, I'd say it is. Wait. Are you having one of those days? Is that your secret? <clears throat> Just out of the blue. How many years have gone by since Hines forbade you from hurting yourself? Maybe I should tell him? Or are you going to give me whatever it is you're hiding? Would you happen to have another torture instrument on your other leg? <clears throat> what a shame. But please let me know if you find one on any of your other members. That kid just doesn't know how to give in to torture. If he carries on like this, I don't know what I'm capable of. Don't kill me! I won't hurt you. Calm down. No, please! If you don't stay quiet, I'll torture you to death. I wasn't spying. Think of your mother. She'll be looking for you. What? My mother? Now that you've calmed down, answer my questions. And I'll do whatever is in my hands to save you. No! Save my mother! She is not in danger. I said that so you would shut up. Do you know who I am? You are Deacon Iago, Father Hines's helper. Sundays after Mass, you read books and tell legends to those of us who can't understand the written word. Can you tell me which book I read to you? Yes, Sir Iago. It's been months since you started reading us the Divine Comedy, but Dante, the Italian, I hope one day I can learn to read like you. Do you remember any of the stories I told you? Yes. My favorite one is that of Bertrand the Wizard. Refresh my memory. Bertrand, native to Languedoc in France, could move objects with his mind. The Inquisition accused him of sorcery and put a rope around his neck but made sure his feet touched the ground so that he wouldn't choke. They cut off his right leg and flung it out in front of him. Show your power by attracting it back to you. Bertrand died three days later when his left leg failed. He never stopped staring at the right leg on the ground. Are you sure it was the right leg that was cut off? Hmm. Is it that important? What's your name? Fergus Quinlan, sir. I was given that name because I was born on St. Fergus Day. 
Hines told me you were spying on him. I didn't want to, sir. I was hiding in that room because I didn't want to clean the great cauldron. They always make me do it, and I'm sorry. I didn't want to, sir. What did you hear Hines saying? I don't know, sir. I didn't understand a thing. He and Sir Roderick talked about coins, a potion, and the devil. Now it's your turn to ask me. I... I don't understand what's happening here at all, sir. Father Hines and I are the founders of a satanic order that meets here, in the basement of this church. The Order of the Flesh. If I fail at helping you escape tonight, after torturing you for hours, we'll make you drink a certain transmutation potion. Then, we'll kill you. And then, you'll come back to life. Many years ago, I read several pages from a forbidden book that is now in the Vatican. One of those pages mentioned a potion that would transmute its drinker into a being able to overcome death. But among its ingredients, there was a golden coin with a strange symbol. Once a year, the night before the great hunt in honor of St. Eden and St. Alec, we meet here to offer sacrifices to Satan. But enough talking. I must find a way to get you out of here. Do me a favor. When you see me around here, shout as if I was tearing your soul out. I didn't do anything. Now, let's see if you can still reason. You've disappeared for some time now. Who may be looking for you? Maybe Zachariah Gray, the kitchen boss. The one I clean for. My mother, probably not yet. She's the only one who tells me to hide and avoid some of the chores. But if she doesn't see me at night, she'll get really scared. Do you understand everything I told you about this place? And what we do here? Yes. Well, no. It was too much information. The members of the Order of the Flesh are noblemen from all over Europe. The same ones that come to the annual hunt. They have funded our search for years. But this year, we'll finally be able to show them results. You'd have been safe if a monk called Siokan, who worked for the Order, hadn't found a couple of coins with a strange symbol a while ago. I still don't know how to help you escape, but I'll find a way soon. And when you escape, I'll say I've killed you and thrown you in the well. That way no one will ever look for you. What about my mother? I'll comfort her. No, please! Listen to me. I am here to save you, but I need you to calm down. I wasn't spying. Have mercy. No, please.
I wasn't spying. Oh, God. Have mercy. Good morning, good man. At your service, sir. They seem really heavy. You're mad. They're empty. You know it's heavy. It's this damn hangover in my head. Oh, I can't even lift it. So Roderick, God save him for many years, forced me to drink six glasses in a row before buying the goods. Maybe he fears someone will poison him. Are you mad? Who could be so evil? Anyway... 
I feel horrible today. Can I take a nap? What do you transport? What am I transporting? Delicious wine from Wiesenlachen. Brewed at St. Mungo's Abbey. But of course you know the story. When St. Imlin traveled through Wiesenlachen, he asked her girl for water. She didn't want to give him any because the plague haunted the village. But then St. Imlin insisted. So she gave him the water, which he transformed miraculously into wine. And he drank happily. And he had a hangover too. And he died, not so miraculously, the very next day. Bah! Details. I think I saw you walking around the lake last night. What were you looking for? I was really looking to get a breath of fresh air. After selling some of my goods to Sir Roderick, I was a bit dizzy. But at the same time, I was looking for stench in the cave. You remember that St. Columbia defeated a monstrous demon on the shores of Loch Ness. It seems that the stench betrayed him. And you found a similar stench here? You're crazy. You can only breathe goodness here. I was waiting to find some pagan devil like that bile. When I knew I was coming here, most of my fathers insisted I look for St. Felin's cave. Right. I've looked for it, too. In vain. What? Same as me. The so-called dizziness went away, but I fell asleep on a rock. A lovely night, out in the open. If it was winter, I'd be dead. I feel like shit today. Will you stay tomorrow for the hunt? I'd love to. I'm a devotee of St. Eden and St. Alec. Plus, I heard that noblemen from all across Europe are coming. But as soon as I get all these barrels in the cart, I'm going to go back to St. Mungo. Could you lend me those strips? I'm afraid not. I need them to tie the barrels. I'm lost without them. They were blessed at St. Alistair McNair's church, the saint of commitment and eternal bonds. He found the corpse of his betrothed 40 years after she died, thanks to the ring he'd given her, with the inscription, from Alistair, with love. I know, an inspiring character.
am I doing here? Give me a good reason. Hines wants me to torture and kill a kid, the cook's son. But there's no way I'll do that. Wait, you don't defy Hines for me, but you do for a dirty servant. I already told you, I'm sick of killing, and I don't want the burden of a child's death upon me. He's a servant. He leads and will lead a miserable life. You're taking nothing from him. Anyway, who cares? I have more than one reason to save that kid. He has your same eyes. The kid? And your hair. I can't kill someone who reminds me so much of you. Our kids could look like him. Kids? You and me? That requires a certain level of commitment. Much more than anything you've shown me. Anyway, who cares? When the Inquisition captured me as a child, it was the death of another child, also a servant's son, that helped me escape. Whether it's God's or the devil's doing, it's only fair that I pay back the favor by saving this kid's life. One death, more or less, is not going to tip the scale. Anyway, who cares? Are the guests arriving? It seems that Don Guzman arrived during the night with a lot of servants. I hate it when members of the Order come with such a large entourage. The more servants, the higher the risk of someone learning about the Order. Have you seen your husband? Yes. He's in a terribly bad mood. I guess none of his whores could give him a hard-on. He's forbidden access to the castle to anybody but the guests and their entourage. What I'm giving you is... is not easy to craft. I'd never worked with gold in such a clean, detailed fashion. And the inscription. I copied the idea from St. Alistair McNair. I... I don't know what to say. Tomorrow, during the hunt, we'll run away together. But first, I need to save that kid. Please, help me. You wanted the cape, didn't you? I need your cape to save the kid. Hide in one of those confessionals once the kid escapes. I'll tell Hinas I killed him accidentally. He'll tell Ursus to search for a new victim, and you'll be able to return to the castle. And tomorrow we will be free? Tomorrow.
I still don't know how to help you escape. But I'll find a way soon. And when you escape, I'll say I've killed you and thrown you in the well. That way, no one will ever look for you. What about my mother? I'll comfort her. No, please. I didn't do anything. Fergus, put this on. It's time to get you out of here. We'll make Ursus believe that you're Cater and that you're sick. When you're inside the keg and the cart starts moving, say 100 Hail Marys, go deep into the woods and walk all the way to Aberdeen. I will give you something extremely valuable. Sell it and embark on a ship to Europe. I don't care what you did before, Dikniago. You're a good man. Don't be stupid. Come with me. We'll go to the Vatican and convince the Pope to burn that cursed book. No. I must finish something and make sure they don't follow you. But when the bastard fell, he grabbed my medallion and took it with him deep into the well. Uh, I'm sorry, my good Vulcan. I'm so, so sorry. I'll forge a new one. Don't worry. No. I'm sorry for you. Ursus! Please forgive my little trick, Falcon. You betrayed me. And I'd do it again. But you won't. Maybe you'll be glad to know that I didn't play fair myself. You were growing too distant. I had to see just how much. And you didn't pass the test. Your fling with Lady Katia. Your disdain for our benefactor, Sir Roderick. 
your arrogance, and now, your betrayal. You must become my faithful disciple once more. Never. I hate you. You will do it. You will. You'll take the child's place in the ritual. You will drink the transmutation potion, die, and be reborn beside me. And you know why, don't you? You'll take out the mercury, so that I will return with no memories. Worry not. I will be waiting for you. I will embrace you and remind you that you are my faithful son. You will serve me for all eternity. As of tomorrow, once we are transmuted, we will recover the Treaty of the Flesh, and you will translate it in full for me. I am certain that it hides even more powerful secrets. The world will be ours, <laughs> my good Vulcan. What about the boy? We have more urgent business today, but we'll find him. I may even grant you the honor of killing him. We have all the time in the world. Deacon Yago? Huh? Who are you? Allow me to reintroduce myself. I am Gabriele Scarpetta, last remaining guardian of the Order of Yago. I'd never heard of the Order of Yago before. It's a secret reserved for the custodians of the treaty, Fergus Quinlan's successors. Another name that should ring a bell. The Order was established in 1534 by mandate of the Pope. And the first custodian of the Treaty of the Flesh was Fergus Quinlan himself. To what extent is it secret? Pope Clement VII himself decided that no other Pope should ever know of its existence. The poor souls have enough as it is, as I'm sure the current Pope could tell you. The Order of Iago has a double aim, finding he who gave his name to the Order so as to give him the Treaty of the Flesh, or protecting the book at all costs. It's amazing that Fergus made it that far. Our founder must have been a man of formidable spirit. A servant who fled and then managed to convince a pope and to protect the treaty until dying of old age in the Vatican. I assume it was Fergus who ordered that I receive the treaty. And right you are. Why me? He knew my past. Because you accepted dying for him, I suppose. There are entire religions based on such trifles, or so they say. How was Fergus so sure that the transmutation potion had worked, and that I would survive for centuries to come? Our founder returned to the place where he met you years before and heard a legend, that of the ghost of Deacon Iago, who rose from the church's ashes screaming, Who am I? and disappeared into the woods, never to be seen again. And no one searched for me until now? He did, all of his life, to no avail. And little by little, his successor stopped looking for you as well. Kovac said that you were his, I don't know, informant? He told me that you'd given him information for his book. The bare minimum to convince him of placing the Treaty of the Flesh on the cover of his book. I had to lure you somehow. He said that you had contacted him in the Vatican. As did all my predecessors every time someone asked about the Treaty of the Flesh. 
It didn't take me long to realize it couldn't be you. Although it did turn out to be very useful in finding you. You seem very sure of my identity. Of course. Your phone call, the evidence, the portrait. Everything leads me to you. You bugged Kovac's telephone, and that's how you found me. True. And the next morning, I tried to do the same with your cell phone. Theft is easy first thing in the morning. People are asleep and unsuspecting. But, to my surprise, I soon realized that someone had beat me to it. Your SIM card had been cloned. I wouldn't turn it on if I were you. Otherwise, whoever did this will know your location. Thanks. I guess. Wait a second. You still haven't said where the treaty is. Is it still in the Vatican? No. It was relocated long ago. Where was it in the Vatican? Before the order was established, it was in the Vatican's secret archives, alongside hundreds of forbidden books. But thanks to our founder, it was moved to a secret vault within the actual archives and protected by means of an entry mechanism that he designed with you in mind. Why did they move it? During the pontificate of Pope Pius VI, the papacy faced several scandals, embezzlement, theft, schemes within the organization itself. The custodian of the treaty convinced himself that the Vatican was no longer a safe place. Where is it now? In 1786, one of my predecessors hid the book in the catacombs of a city that was transferring the skeletons of its cemeteries to those very same catacombs. There, they recreated the same entry mechanism that the founder had designed for you. That can't be. They took it to Paris? My Paris? And there it still lies. Look for the Triskelion in the tunnels and you will find the Treaty of the Flesh. Goodbye, Deacon Yago. Wait, wait, won't you be traveling with me? No, I am free of my burden at last. The Order of Yago dies today. You will never see me again. Thank you for everything, Scarpetta. I will find the book and dedicate my life to protecting its secret. I don't doubt it. Then why don't you look happy about it? Don't you realize that your life gains meaning and that my life loses it? May God be with you, Deacon Yago. It has been an honor to meet you. Hmm. Well... The restoration is... Say one more word and there's no deal. I'm leaving in four hours and I don't have time to waste. Shit. What a piece of shit. Anyway, Mrs. Yesterday... I'm not a Mrs. And yesterday is not my last name. Oh, as if I cared. The pictures didn't lie. Neither did the certificate. It's a magnificent sculpture. Now let's talk about the price. Your whoever that was was very clear. He asked for 400,000 euros. More than what it's worth. 100,000 euros, that's my offer. And not a cent more of your continental currency. I don't care what whoever said. 600,000 euros or no deal. 500,000 euros. Sold. You'll find a check for 500,000 euros in this envelope. And don't give me that look. 
I've been haggling for years. I'll send my men to pick up the piece this afternoon. I gave a card to your... whoever that was. I'll activate it to show the phone number if he needs to call. It's been a pleasure meeting you, Mrs... whoever. We should meet some day when I'm back in Paris. We have so much in common. Are you sure this is where we're supposed to meet? Sure, Joke. Do you want me to phone her? Hi, Boris. Ah, you see? Happy birthday, Mole. Hi, John. Hey, take a look at this. Maybe you've seen this symbol in the catacombs? Hmm. I think I have. It's pretty far in one of the sections tourists never see. Cool. Can you take us there? Sure, once we've clarified something. Boris said it wouldn't be cheap. Two thousand. If the catacops catch us, you better pay my fine or else you'll face the consequences. If it's too expensive for you, good luck finding someone who knows the tunnels like I do. Plus, who knows climbing and who doesn't give a damn about the law. All right. Let's hurry. It's at the end of that gallery. I'll stand guard here. If the catacops come, I'll lure them away while you escape down this tunnel. If you need me, point here with this.
I'm certain that we have to cross that fence, but I just can't find the way. Can you help me? Sure, Joke. In a jiffy. Just gotta finish something first. You're staring at that skull. It's my grandpa. I'm asking him if he knows where my Danny is. You don't need to ask that skull. I can tell you what happened. Everybody can. No, you weren't there when it happened. Nor were I. I was late. But Grandpa is in heaven. He can see everything. So your grandpa is talking to you? Not right now. He's going to ask some other dead guys, just in case someone was there when Cadway collapsed. I sure hope he finds someone who can tell him where Danny is. Dude, they moved the skeletons here in the 18th century, and they were already old. He can't be your grandfather. Then he's my super mega great 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 Who cares? Are you getting used to that light? Sure. Why do you ask? Now I'm afraid it'll go out. But luckily, I have the lighter that you gave me at Cadway. I don't remember giving you a lighter in Cadway. How typical. You found it, brand new, and gave it to me, saying it was the light of truth. I'm keeping it like a golden treasure. Can you lend me the lighter? No, no. What if the headlight dies? That headlight will not burn out easily. How do you know that? You're so close to the wall that you're just lighting a tiny space. That saves a lot of energy. Come on, Joke. I'm not taking stupid pills, you know. Oops, sorry. You're sure the light won't go out? Yes, I'm sure. Okay, I believe you. Are you sure Pauline didn't tell you where she was going? Again, no. As if she told me anything. I saw her this morning, when Baxter came to pay a lot for that Japanese statue. Thanks for arranging things with Mole. As soon as you said catacombs, she came to my mind. But not just my mind. Ever since I saw her at that party, she affects another part of me, too. <laughs> Happy birthday. But now I'm too busy to think with that other place. Are you getting used to that light? Sure. Why do you ask? Now I'm afraid it'll go out. But luckily, I have the lighter that you gave me at Cadway. Can you lend me the lighter? Okay. But if you lose it, don't blame me for lending it to you.
What's the matter? Problems? Yeah, maybe. What I'm looking for, maybe beyond the fence. Do you know how to open it? Nope. I tried once, but who cares? I know you don't talk a lot to Pauline, but has she told you anything these past few days? Pauline? To me? Oh, come on. We weren't close at all in the old days, and it's rained a lot since then. Moreover, the group gave me the cold shoulder when I joined the catacops, but Pauline had already left before that. Thanks for the headlights. I didn't tell Boris to bring them, because, well, it's obvious. But then I bought them, because Boris is just not obvious. You said that the catacombs police will come in... One hour, maybe less. That is in case they haven't changed the schedule since I left. Why did you join the catacombs? Money. I know. Bizarre for someone who did the same kind of things that Pauline did as a teen. The rest of the gang found it weird, too. Fuck them, big time. Boris told me they kicked you out of the catacombs. Yeah, some things never change, like me. What did change was the nose of the cop who messed with me. <laughs> Are you sure you haven't seen the medallion symbol in any other place? Not at all, but this is the only place I noticed it. And I know the tunnel's like the palm of my hand. Okay, the catacops will be patrolling the area you're searching in a little more than one hour, if they haven't changed their route. Boris told me that you work as a tourist guide here in the catacombs. Always answering the same stupid questions. So the skeletons weren't here originally? Stupid question number one. They brought them here between 1786 and 1788 because some Paris cemeteries were overcrowded. Parisians love to die beyond their means. What do the Nazis have to do with these tunnels? Stupid question number two. But anyway, those bastards built a subterranean bunker among the tunnels, some six kilometers away from here. The cool thing is, they didn't know that the Resistance was using the very same tunnels to escape. They celebrated black masses here? Stupid question number three. Congratulations. But yeah, there are some remains in some of the tunnels. You didn't find a Y-shaped symbol among them? No. No way. Which joke do you mean? Hey, look, it's my grandpa. Always the same lunatic with the same nonsense. The worst thing, it always works. People laugh their asses off.
Are you sure it was the right leg that was cut off? Hmm. Is it that important? These pivots on the ground, I'm trying to raise them up.
My guess is that if you pass a rope through the rings on the well, then we'd have sort of a handrail for me to grab onto. Okay, let's hurry. Well, it seems you're on the right path. Let's go. There you go. Hey, don't die, okay? Dear Deacon Yago, if you are reading this, my suspicions were right. You transmuted, and if you've managed to get here, then the Order of Yago is not as safe as it needs to be. Now it's your turn to protect the Treaty of the Flesh. I think of you as a demon redeemed for the Divine Cause, like a new St. Paul, and I congratulate myself on having caused that redemption. You not only saved me, but also gave a new meaning to my existence. I pray that I'm now giving a new meaning to yours. May God be with you, my friend Yago. Fergus Quinlan, Rome, October the 27th, 1558.
Come on, the catacops are about to come. Let's move, Boris. That's what you were looking for? Yes. Hi, dear. Amanda? You? I lost track of you in New York, but thanks to your friend Cell, I was able to track you down. Now, you'll let us tie you up, you'll get on the boat, and if you try anything, he dies. Is that okay? If I do it right, I can get you to stick your hand in your wound and pull out your own guts. My good Vulcan. No. You... you can't be... Hinas died at St. Fergus 500 years ago. The Inquisition killed him and burned down the church with his body in it. I'm afraid you're mistaken. A coin was enough to transmute two people. You are immortal. 
After making you drink and stabbing you, Ursus gave me the other half of the potion. Just seconds before the Inquisition barged in. When they set the church on fire, I thought I'd suffocate in my hiding place. I quickly poured mercury in the potion and drank it, but didn't die. I didn't dare leave the church until two nights later. I looked for you among the burnt bodies, but how was I going to recognize you? How could I be sure that the potion had worked? It worked. I'm still alive, and so are you. But you know the best part? Five hundred years later, I still hate you. You used me and turned me into a murderer. And not only did you kill me in the end, you condemned me to a life of perpetual oblivion. Why did you come back, Hinas? To torture me? Torture you? With that? Not at all. Quite the opposite. I'm back because I hate myself more than you'll ever hate me. I beg you to claim revenge for everything I did to you. I want you to kill me. I want to die once and for all. For good and only you can help me, my son. Ursus! I told you nothing would happen. Please, follow me outside. Take the wine set and blow out the candles. Our host will arrive at dusk. In the meantime, will you think about my request? Please. Huh? Where's the other guy? Poor Ronald. Goodbye, my dear gardener. You had wonderful green fingers. He cried blood when he started reading it. Just like you said he would. Hi, honey. Mr. Yesterday! Amanda, go find the madman. He has to be here somewhere. Lenny, you bring up Hines's alchemy table. And get this shit out of here. Well, well, well. Why the long face? So I suppose you're hunting down immortals all over the world? Now that you mention it, I feel honored. 100% of the world's immortal population is in my house this very instant. But don't get me wrong. Your old friend is here of his own accord. What did you do to Boris? What did we do? What did you do? Lenny just told me he disappeared. Don't try to fool me. Where is he? Hines, is there anything you didn't tell me about Vulcan? Does he have any powers we might not know of? I hope not, little Vic. Little Vic? Don't act surprised, Mr. Yesterday. I've known Father Ginez for a long time, ever since I found him in that nursing home. Oh, I can't stand children crying. Get out of here. You're rude, sir. When a child cries, someone should console them. Satan, take me now. You won't leave until I ask you what happened, will you? They told me my granddad's here, but I can't find him. I entered the first nursing home I found. I guess it never occurred to me that there could be more than one. Nor that my grandfather was in the most expensive one in London. I ran away from home because I haven't seen my granddad in six months. Ah well, I didn't even get to meet mine. He's been dead for 600 years. 
My granddad is sick. There's a little man in his head that steals his words. Oh, that's a shame. You can't live without words. A lady at the door told me to wait here. We'll wait. And let's hope we don't have to wait too long. Sir? My name is Victoria Baxter, but my friends call me Vic. I haven't had a name for a long time. Or friends, for that matter. But you can call me Hines. I don't have a lot of friends either. There's my nanny, Dorothy, Catherine, the cook, and Ronald, the gardener's son. There's something I don't understand. If your granddad died that long ago, you must be really, really old. I mean, my nan was 87, and everyone said she died of old age. Oh, and who says I haven't died? I... I don't think I understand. Listen here, little girl. If I tell you the truth, will you do me a favor? Of course, Mr. Hines. I was your grandmother's age the first time I died. But years before, I had taken a very special potion. They told me it gave you the power to come back to life at the same exact age as when you died for the first time. But what? If that wasn't true, the only way to find out was to kill myself, but I couldn't do that. You could have looked up that potion in an encyclopedia. Oh. <laughs> uh, there weren't any encyclopedias back then. Although, there was a book that mentioned the potion, but I never found it again. Doctors know about these things. Did you ever ask them? I couldn't ask anyone. I'd done uh, uh, bad things. I was a fugitive. And didn't you have any friends who could help you? I had two good friends, Ursus and Falcon. They were like my children. Ursus died in a fire. As for Vulcan, uh, I lost his track. I spent decades searching for him, because only he could confirm if the powers of the potion were real. I searched for decades in vain, until I died of old age, as old as I am now. Every few weeks I die, and I come back to life, and I can't walk. I can't even wipe my own shit. You're not allowed to say shit. They just opened up my throat so I could talk. I haven't been able to say a single word for 60 years. I'll say shit all I want. And you should do the same. Sh shit. See? It's easy. Shit. Nice. Don't let anyone ever take away your right to say what you want. Words should never be hidden. Shit. Shit, shit. <laughs> I like you, Vic. But I think you should calm down. You know a lot about death. Will my granddad live? I don't know, Vic. I do know that if he dies, he won't come back like me. But... If I could change places with him, I'd do so gladly. You're a good man, Mr. Hines. Now it's my turn. You owe me a favor. Yes, whatever you want. Could you place your hand on mine? What's going to happen to you? No one should die alone. Stay with me for a little while. And don't stop talking. <sighs> Just pretend that I'm... Sleep. Don't let them see that I'm... He died right there in front of me. And I stood there for nearly half an hour, holding his hand and begging him to come back. And he did. It was true! Hello, little Vic. You're so lucky! I'm not so sure. I'll die again in a few weeks. 
that I might not be as lucky as I was today. It might take me a lot longer to come back. They'll certify my death. They'll bury me. I'll die and come back. Die and come back. Die and come back inside my grave until there's no room left in the cemetery. Then they'll empty the graves, burn the remains, and I'll die and come back again, and I'll drag myself until someone finds me and takes me to a public nursing home. But I won't find you there. You'll have died of old age. Luckily, that didn't happen. It took me 40 years. But I found you at last. And together we found your beloved Vulcan, the treaty, and also, surprise, we even found a judgment coin. The time has come. I ask you, for all the hate you feel towards me, please read the treaty in search of the potion that reverts immortality. Please, kill me. You don't deserve the compassion you seek. You've destroyed too many lives. It's far more than you ever showed for Fergus, or Alonzo, or me, and so many others. And yet you had compassion for yourself. You weren't capable of ending your own life. That's how you wanted it, and that's how it shall be. Vulcan, please. Listen, don't waste any more of my time. None of that shit is going to happen. We're going to mix up a new transmutation potion. But I'm the one who's going to do the drinking. You only need one coin to make enough potion for two. One for you, and one for me. No, I can't trust you. What if you trick me? Or if something goes wrong? I need to make sure it works before I drink it. But as you can imagine, I have to test it on someone who has never been transmuted. Let's see if Lenny finds the madman. You'll have an immortal friend. What else could you ask for? Miss Baxter, the madman is nowhere to be found. But I did find this. Pauline! Oh! Forget the madman. Here's an even better offer. Wouldn't you just love an immortal girlfriend? I'll come back, John. It takes Rines a while to come back. What about her? I'm... I'm alive! And you don't know how happy that makes me. Amanda, keep an eye on them. I promise that when we find another coin, you'll be... Shit. Shit.
I hope you're not afraid of the dark. Many thanks for your gun. I'm in serious need of a real one. Well played, miss. You have our undying respect. Now, tell us what you want. Untie us, and... W and we'll kill you. Respectfully. Marcus, are you stupid? No. As you know, my IQ is 21 points higher than yours. I was negotiating with the miss here. She tricked us big time, so she's not stupid either, which means your negotiation is not going to fool her. I believe the point here is that our logical movement implies redirecting our bad start with the miss toward a relationship based in honesty. Holy crap. I'm all for honesty, but she starts. Thanks, Julius. First and paramount, we're here for something related to a certain post-impressionist from Zundert. Would you please be so kind to tell us where the lady of the house is? What for, if she just told you herself? Make yourself comfortable, guys.
You're a mega rat, 100% mega. Come here and give me a fucking hug. Weasel! <laughs> Tell me it's not you who took those two idiots down. You didn't see it? You used to have cameras. I still have them, but I was taking a nap. I was so bored, I just woke up now. What? I suppose you saw the two guys with guns up there? Are they freaking you out? I remember I gave you a contact to buy a gun. <laughs> Weasel! Okay. They are art collecting specialists. They manage conflictual situations in unpeaceful ways. I should have given them something related to the canvas I asked you to bring here. I should have, but I didn't. They're not from here. Who do they work for? For my client. Someone whose name I don't know, of course. Probably they don't either. They're alive after all. You agreed to meet here? Who do you think I am, Rot? We'd agreed to meet in a small airport on the outskirts of Hilversum, about 15 miles from here. It seems they were coming in a private airplane. I don't know how they found me, but who cares now? Were you already down here when they came? Yeah, there was a macho plumber fixing the boat's pipes. I came here not to puke in his face. These two sons of bitches scared the shit out of him. Ha! <laughs> he ran out of here like crazy. How long since they arrived? No idea. I just had breakfast. Early evening, I guess. I brought what you asked me for. An original by an unknown painter with the canvas and frame from the Netherlands. Would you just tell me what you want it for? In brief, I'm going to paint a new Van Gogh using your canvas and its pigments. I'll use a new forging system. 100% mega. Now I just need a subject. You want the canvas and frame from 1880 so your forgery passes the dating tests, don't you? That's it. You'll scratch the paint from the canvas and mix it again to paint the forgery with it. Is that right? 100% correct. You've gentrified, Rat, but you still remember the business basics. I got you there, huh? It's Mega Rat, an AI that stores data from paintings of all given artists in any given period in the world entirely. Brush strokes, texture, shape, color, composition, absolutely everything. Then you feed it an image and it transforms it in the style of the analyzed painter. Finally, a simple robotic arm does the rest. And do they fall for it? Do you remember that new Tintoretto they found a year and a half ago? No way. No? How do you think about this boat? You say you still need a topic? Yeah, something Van Gogh could have painted. I should have looked for something, but ah, uh, who cares? Hey, what if you find it for me? Take a picture with this. I wouldn't be able to. My hand is 100% unsteady because of my hangover. In the hidden folder on my private server, there's a subfolder with a 3D model of an ancient coin. You need to 3D print it in gold. 100% no. I just saved you from those jerks. I can't print gold. Do you know how much one of those printers costs? But I can print it in ABS filaments and then coat it in gold. <laughs> That'll work, I guess. Just bring me some gold, between six and nine grams, depending on the purity. I still haven't taken a single photo you can use for the Van Gogh. And instead of doing what you're supposed to, you came to update me on nothing. How intelligent you are. You were supposed to come to Paris two days ago. What happened? A party happened. Oh, yeah. You were just standing here, the party came, and despite your protestations, it just wouldn't leave? 
You know how it is. Did Lemur come? No, forget her, big time. Hacker reformed. Hacker buried. How long did the party last? Three days. Not bad. Now your parties are all about uh, tea and cookies? What's got into you? Come on. A party at Weasel's and the house doesn't collapse? Everything is clean. Paris was different. We were broke. Now I hire a cleaning service beforehand, even a plumber. Ugh, yeah. Cleaning the pipes the day after your parties was just like, ugh. Did a lot of people come? Yeah, I guess so. You guess? Yeah, do you remember Squirrel? She lives here. She came with a couple of chicks and... Well, we closed ourselves in here with everything we needed and it was mega. So, you held your own private party inside your own private party? You haven't changed a bit since Paris, have you? Someone has to keep the essence alive, man. Lemur married, you with a guy. Fuck, there's a chick that became a cop. Mole, don't pretend you don't remember her. Hey, who cares? The old gang is dead, but I'm not. Okay then, let's talk about John. Oh, kids, why did I ever mention it? No, no, that's not the problem. Well, yes, we have some differences there, but nothing serious. The problem is that when I try to protect him, he goes crazy. Whenever someone starts getting too close, like a chick with bigger balls than them, they just turn their fucking firewall on. Yeah, like you know so much about men. Usually I take it okay, but the other day, I got mad and he rushed off. I'm not sure how he's gonna be when he comes back. Do you regret it? Truth is that I don't regret reproaching him for his obsessions. And I don't regret shouting at him either. You know, there have to be limits. Either he changes or... You won't find anybody like John. He's special. I can't believe my friend Weasel is saying this about a guy. Hi, my name is John Yesterday. I'm 500 years old, yada, yada, yada. You really thought I wouldn't notice you had another hidden folder beside the one we share on your server? Oh, yeah. And you think he's crazy as a loon? No, Rat. When you've used as much as I've used, you learn to tell reality from imagination. What? But you never said anything. Not even when I asked you for the coin. We have too many unfinished issues. When we finish with them, you tell me if 500 years are enough for a man to find a clitoris. Okay then, let's talk about John. Oh, kids, why did I ever mention it? No, no, that's not the problem. Well, yes, we have some differences there, but nothing serious. The problem is that when I try to protect him, he goes crazy. Whenever someone starts getting too close, like a chick with bigger balls than them, they just turn their fucking firewall on. Yeah, like you know so much about men. Usually I take it okay, but the other day I got mad and he rushed off. I'm not sure how he's gonna be when he comes back. Do you regret it? Truth is that I don't regret reproaching him for his obsessions, but only if I hadn't gotten mad. You won't find anybody like John. He's special. I can't believe my friend Weasel is saying this about a guy. Hi, my name is John Yesterday. I'm 500 years old, yada, yada, yada. You really thought I wouldn't notice you had another hidden folder beside the one we share on your server? Oh, yeah. And you think he's crazy as a loon? No, Rat. When you've used as much as I've used, you learn to tell reality from imagination. What? But you never said anything. Not even when I asked you for the coin. We have too many unfinished issues. When we finish with them, you tell me if 500 years are enough for a man to find a clitoris.
Are you still thinking about killing me if I untie you? Well, Marcus and I have been talking and... Yeah, we're gonna kill you, but very respectfully. Why can't you just bloody well pretend for once in your life? I know you came here for a Van Gogh. Oh, didn't I tell you before? Fake Van Gogh, mind you. Who cares? The thing is that only Weasel can give it to you. That's the bloody truth. Which means that if I untie you, you'll spare her life. Sure. She'll be in for some torture, though, obviously. Here we go again. Think, Julius. She's three days late. She's obviously in need of some serious motivation. Let's help her. So, you have an airplane near the city. What if we do? Yes, miss. I want you to take me to London tonight. Oh, do you? Well, I'm afraid we can't fly if we're tied up here. My brother here's got a valid point. But the real problem is that if you untie us, we'll kill you. So, even if we fly you there afterwards, well, I assume you'd rather visit London as a living being. Am I right there, miss? Uh, yeah, basically. One moment, Marcus. She wants something. Let's assume we help you. What will you give us in return? Well, you're my prisoners. You'll be free again. I'm not sure you want to seal that deal, miss. You need to untie us before we fly, thus giving us free reign to kill you. Thanks so much for pointing that out, Marcus. You're welcome, brother. Let's say... I won't kill you. Fair enough. You certainly are an effective negotiator, miss. Wait there, Marcus. She's not killing us. Why? How do you know that? I would certainly kill us. She's bluffing. She's not a murderer. Look at her eyes. I don't quite follow you. Then just take my word for it. You're good at logic and gore. I'm good at art and people. No deal, miss. I'll pay you for it. Good hard cash. Tax-free. Oh, so she's Mrs. Trump now, is she? If you're in the art collecting business, you obviously know who Victoria Baxter is. We offered her our services, but she wouldn't have them. But she has mine, and I just closed a good deal with her. Let me express my deepest envy, miss. No, wait. Is she lying, Julius? No, she isn't. Just look into her eyes. How many pounds are you willing to pay for the right, miss? What about 5,000 pounds? What about 10 times more? Okay, but taking half off. Only if we add a percentage that makes me forget the or in my face and the other affronts. Let's say 35%. Good. But did I say tax free? <laughs> I didn't mean it. We'll apply UK taxes, because that's where the service will end. Fair is fair. Then we're set for, uh, mm. I'm gonna need a calculator. Oh, no you won't. Marcus? 28,846 pounds, 15. Seriously? Is it too much? Okay, gentlemen, we have a- Wait, wait. This has been way too easy, miss. You must be really desperate. And that's, well, that's kind of scary. You must tell us. Why are you so desperate to get to London? Or, there's no deal. You know Coleridge's? Like the palm of our hand, miss. That's just not true. I've never studied the palm of my hand by heart, nor yours. There's this 1830s chest decorated with ancient coins that they're auctioning off tomorrow. One of those coins belonged to my partner, in the past. I gotta get it back. Oh, I see. And I guess you already have the key to Coleridge's door. We've been trying to get in there for months. The alarm system is just a work of genius. Not a problem. Uh, let's say that Weasel is not the only tech-savvy girl on this boat. Julius, this could be a new beginning for us. Yeah. Well, fuck, Mr. Dickhead. We could establish ourselves on our own. Okay, let's say I believe you. If you manage to get all three of us in there, then your plane tickets are on the house. You don't? Then you pay us. Marcus? 28,846 pounds, 15. Okay, gentlemen. We've got a deal. 
When my friend Weasel gives you the Van Gogh, and when she's safe, I'll untie you and we'll be off. One of the guys up there has some gold teeth. They're no use to us inside his mouth. One of the guys up there, they're no use to... What do you think of the Westertorin as a topic for the new Van Gogh? I think it's perfect. Now you go chat with your pals up there before you get bored here. I'll need about four hours to get this done. Julius, I see that you've got some gold teeth. Yeah, but that's none of your business. Actually, they are. I need them ever so badly. No way, Jose. You don't want to do that, miss. He screamed when they removed the real ones. He screamed when they put the golden ones in. He'll surely scream if you remove them now. But don't worry, Julius. I won't use the word chicken on you. Hey, you know what? They're all yours. Go on, remove them. Say, miss, do you think that the word crybaby applies here? Fuck you, Marcus. You know I can't do that, Julius. You want it gold? You got it. Here, you are a resourceful rat. Now you go chat with your pals up there before you get bored here. I'll need about four hours to get this done. More or less the same I'll need for the Van Gogh. Uh, good thing I solved the plane thing with Julius and Marcus, because I'm not going to be on time for the flight to London.
Guys, are you ready to leave for London? Finally. Here's what we're gonna do. Please let me tell it, miss. I'm good at these things. You will untie us and give us the false Van Gogh. Arrangement closed. We will walk for six minutes to the closest taxi stand, where we'll wait between seven and nine minutes. We'll take off as soon as we get to the aerodrome, and you'll sleep instantly. You'll wake up when we land at Elstree's aerodrome on the outskirts of London. We will get our car back, drive to our flat, and prepare our plan to sneak into Coleridge's. We will get in by the side alley. Miss, you will have 45 seconds to disable the building's alarm network. I dare say you'll do it in 43. Once we're inside, Julius will say, The piece you're looking for must be in room 12B. But I'll disagree. You're wrong, brother. It's in 8A. I'll be right, as always, and when I remind Julius of that fact, he will say, Why do you always say what I'm going to say before I can say it? And I'll answer, Because I'm good at recognising patterns, and you only have a few of them. And you will say, Shh! Will you shut up and stand guard? You will extract a coin from an antique piece, then replace it with another coin, and we will run for our lives. Julius will want to celebrate, but you'll say goodbye very quickly, and you'll return to Paris to meet up with your boyfriend and probably have sex with him. But I'm not 100% sure all that is going to happen. Did they take John? There was nothing I could do. They took him on a boat, and I... I'm really sorry, Rat. I wish I could tell you where they are. You don't need to. Rue saint lison des Allers, 17th. Is that in Saint-Germain-des-Prés? Yes, it's a mansion, total snob land. If the mansion has a courtyard, it must have a sewer. And if there's a sewer, I can help you sneak in. Baxter won't be back for a while. I hate waiting. Let's take a walk. We could surely use our two hours of daily exercise. Is it safe to leave the guy untied? No, he can't escape. And even if he could, he won't. Not without me. I mean too much to him. Today, I will die for the last time. It seems amazing, impossible, but last.
Maybe we should start prepping the piano hall for that thing they want to do with John yesterday. Not yet. No. Don't move my table yet. Oh, oh, damned floor. That's, 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 let's change sides. In Spanish, my mother tongue, someone once translated the bards to be or not to be as to live or die. Well, that's about right, isn't it? Oh, how ro- It's not about death. It's about not being. Non-existence. Roland was fixing up the plants in the lounge, I think. Another loser. It seems like everyone's got time off except that stupid gardener and I. Well, and Amanda. I could use some time off myself. Not that I'm complaining.
What do you want? Pauline? How did you get here? I'll tell you later. Right now, all you need to know is... I placed cameras and microphones in the Neo. From my tablet, I can see what they're doing in the hall where you spoke to Baxter. I found a judgment coin. What? No need to thank me. Well, whatever. It's up to you. Oh, and the most important thing. As soon as I open this door, we're getting out of here. I'm not going anywhere, Pauline. I can't leave the treaty or... No, I've got too many things to settle. But Boris is in danger. Please, take him. Are you crazy? You've got to come with me. You're not going to change my mind, Pauline. I've remembered things about myself that, look, I don't deserve immortality. I'm the only person to blame for all of this. If I don't fix this, we'll spend eternity running away from someone. Please, just do as I say. Save Boris, and I'll take care of the rest. John! Here, this might come in handy. You need a four-digit code to open the door. Since it's Hinnis' lab, maybe the password is a date that's important to him. What year was he born in? I'm not sure. I think it was around 1445. What year did you see him for the first time? Um, it must have been, uh, 1481, give or take. When did you find that cursed book? It was a few years after arriving at Santa Brigida. It must have been around, um, 1483. When was the Order of the Flesh founded? 1497, for sure, I think. When did you carry out that transmutation ritual? That I do know, 1501. It's strange that I never asked you this, but what year were you born in? 1466, although it was a bit strange. According to Hinas, an old man stayed at my father's castle. He was traveling on his own the next morning. When they entered his bedchamber, the old man had vanished, and in his place, there was a baby, me. How can I convince you to come with me? Didn't you want to have kids? To hell with Baxter and Hines. I'm sick and tired of the past. Let's look to the future. I don't want to bring children into this world. With me, they'd always be in danger. And would they also be transmuted? Or would we have to watch them die of old age? Pauline, I'm coming to realize that no immortal can lead a full life. I'm recording everything that's going on in the hall where the Neo is. If I see the footage, I'm sure I'll find something to incriminate both Baxter and Hines. We'd only have to edit it and send it to the police. Baxter is a millionaire. 
She'd find a way to go scot-free. You say you've done terrible things. I know you, Mr. Boring. They can't be all that bad. Remember what I was like when I was choke? That's nothing. I've killed, tortured, tricked, betrayed. I don't deserve to live, let alone live forever. That wasn't you. I'm never myself. That's the problem. I figured out how to escape, and Mole is waiting underground to guide us through the tunnels. Then what? We live underground so that they can never find us? Didn't you say I'm the best thing that ever happened to you? Then come with me. The best things aren't always the most decisive. Sometimes the worst matters most, precisely because they get in the way of the best. John, the door is open. Bring Boris. Okay, but Boris isn't ready yet. Close the door in case someone comes and hide while I convince him. Joke! I'm so glad to see you. I'm awake. We don't have time, Boris. Pauline is waiting for you outside. As soon as I untie you, you need to get out of here. What about you? I've got some things I need to do. But I'll catch up with you guys. No way. If you stay, I stay. Did I already mention that I'm awake? You've got to escape. For Danny. How else are you going to find him? Oh. There's something I didn't tell you. While we were in the catacombs, my super mega grandpa found him. He's there with him, Choke. He always has been. Boris, 
I've been asleep for a long time, Choke, but now I'm awake. Danny is no longer here. The party's over. Are you okay? Hey, I'm not sad. It's more like a release. Danny is okay. Dead, maybe. But as we all know, dying is not all that tragic. Boris, trust me. You've got to go with Pauline. Yeah, you wish. No, sir. I'm staying with you. Choke, choke. Look, I get that you don't want to go with Pauline. But you should know that Mole is waiting to help you escape. Help me? Who else? She doesn't really get along with Pauline. And I'm not going anywhere. Oh, poor girl. I can't leave her waiting like that. I think she likes you. <gasps> Maybe she wants to make Danny's with me. So are you going then? Just as soon as you untie me. But only because you asked me to. Boris, trust me. You've got to go with Pauline. Yeah, you wish. No, sir. I'm staying with you. Choke, choke. This is dangerous. We could both die, Boris. I need you alive to remind me who I am if they kill me and I come back to life. Tell the boss to remind you. She's your girlfriend. Boris, you could die. It's better that way. Then I'll see Danny. <laughs> it's not like anyone's waiting for me out there. Boris, trust me. You've got to go with Pauline. Yeah, you wish. No, sir. I'm staying with you. Choke, choke. If I stay, someone's got to look after Pauline. Choke, are you playing the damsel in distress card with me? How am I going to take care of anyone? I'm completely nuts. Boris, trust me. You've got to go with Pauline. Yeah, you wish. No, sir. I'm staying with you. Choke, choke. We've been through this before, Boris. It wouldn't be the first time we're separated under similar circumstances. But just remember, no matter how far apart we are, I always come back for you. Yeah, I know that. But hey, if I can spare you the trouble of coming back to get me... Boris, trust me. You've got to go with Pauline. Yeah, you wish. No, sir. I'm staying with you. Choke, choke. By the way, this powder is awesome. What a find. <sighs> oh, oh, thanks. Now I can scratch my itchy nose. Boris, trust me. You've got to go with Pauline. Yeah, you wish. No, sir. I'm staying with you. Choke, choke. If I stay... Someone's got to look after Pauline. Choke. Are you playing the damsel in distress card with me? How am I going to take care of anyone? <laughs> I'm completely nuts. Boris, trust me. You've got to go with Pauline. Yeah, you wish. No, sir. I'm staying with you. Choke, choke. Boris, trust me. You've got to go with Pauline. Yeah, you wish. No, sir. I... 
We've been through this before, Boris. It wouldn't be the first time we're separated under similar circumstances. But just remember, no matter how far apart we are, I always come back for you. Yeah, I know that. But hey, if I can spare you the trouble of coming back to get me... Boris, trust me. You've got to go with Pauline. Yeah, you wish. No, sir. While we were in the kids there... Boris, yeah. Look. Help me? Who else? Oh, I think... Sh <gasps> so are you going? But only because you asked me to. Okay, we'll wait for Pauline to open the door. And then you'll do just what she says. I managed to free Boris. Get him out of here. Okay, John. You win for now, but don't think you're gonna get your way. So hang in there, because I'll come back for you. He cried blood when he started reading it, just like you said he would. If you did anything to Pauline... I've known Father Ginez for a long time, ever since I found him in that nursing home. Surprise! We even found a judgment coin. The time has come. Please, kill me. Hello, who's there? Hi, this is Pauline Petit. Oh. Wow. I was wondering if you've seen my bow around here. You know, cute, pointy jaw, looks kind of dazed. Hello? Hello? Are you there? Don't move, Frenchie, or your brains will be all over the intercom. <laughs> I'd love to see the look on their... Ugh, no. Let's go inside. You tricked us. Miss Baxter! Ursus! Find anything, my dear Vulcan? It's funny. I granted you immortality, and now I beg you to take it away from me. No. What? No, Vulcan, please. You have to. I don't deserve this. You didn't grant me immortality. According to this, only a person transmuted by the creators of the treaty can understand its pages. And I understood them way before St. Fergus. Whoever they were, they transmuted me as a child, centuries before I even met you. You only overwrote the process, allowing me to come back as an adult instead of a child. But I'll help you. Reverting the process is simple. Everything we need is on your table, including the coin. Thank you. Thank you. You don't know how much I need this. You're not the only one. I'll be drinking too. John. No, Pauline. I told you, I don't deserve this either. I've given it some thought and I think I understand you. 
can't be easy to live with the knowledge of what you were or what you could become. Besides, no matter how much you try to hide it, no matter what kind of ordinary life we intend to lead, someone will always find out and come after you to take advantage somehow. So go ahead, as for me, I think I won't give up immortality. Not yet, anyway. I've got all the time in the world for that. But if you're intent on dying, it should be of old age. I won't stand by and watch a street thug or a car accident take you away too soon. And since I'm determined to be your bodyguard, I might as well have infinite lives. The time has come. At last. Thank you, my son. Thank you. There's only one thing that pains me. How can I let you go after a lifetime of searching for you? No. You're coming with me. My good Vulcan. John, John, no, no. Years before, an old man who claimed to be a messenger of the King of Naples spent a night at your father's estate. The next morning, he had disappeared, leaving behind all of his belongings. His clothes were lying on the bed, covered in blood. And among the clothes and blood, they found a happy and healthy baby, you. Whoever they were, they transmuted me as a child. Centuries before I even met you, you only overwrote the process, allowing me to come back as an adult instead of a child. You win, John. 